communities to be patient with us. We understand that water uh, is such a basic need that uh, they need it now as of yesterday. So it's important that we work together. The MK party has called for the immediate resignation of the IEC commissioner, Janet Love, for what it says is her blatant bias. The party has warned that if Love does not exit the commission in the next seven days, it reserves the right to pursue all available avenues, including approaching the courts. In a statement, the party has cited Love's response to a question during a January media briefing in which she said Zuma would not be eligible to be on the MK party's parliamentary candidates list. It says the pronouncement was premature and in violation of electoral rules which stipulate that such declarations can only be made following an official objection. The party also takes issue with the fact that Love did not recuse herself from the Commission's committee which was responsible for deciding on Zuma's eligibility. The MK party has cited an objection to Love's involvement in the audit of the DRC's voter registration process which was held in May last year where four prominent opposition candidates accused her of legitimizing a flawed electoral process. In other news, the ebb and flow rest camp at the wilderness section of the Garden Route National Park in the Western Cape has been reopened to the public following floods earlier this week. On Tuesday, torrential rain caused the Dos River to flood, which caused damage to the adjacent park. Around 200 millimetres of rain was recorded in the area over a six-hour period, with some guests that were camping there moved to other accommodation facilities. Sam Park spokesperson JP Lowe says they're hiking to Trails, however, remained closed. The following hiking trails remain closed. That is half uh, colored Kingfisher Trail, Kalinula Bird Hide, Brown Hooded Kingfisher Trail, Waterside Boardwalk, Woodville Big Tree, Otanika Hiking Trail, and Canoe Activities. The park lines are now fully restored and operational. And lastly, looking further afield, the Israeli Defense Minister has told his U.S. counterpart that Israel will respond appropriately if Iran directly attacks it. Yoav Gallant has been assured of full support of, from U.S., but Washington has continued to request countries to dissuade Iran from launching a retaliatory strike following last week's attack on its consulate in Syria. The BBC's Hugo Beshega reports. American officials are warning that an Iranian response is a matter of when, not if. Iran could be planning to launch an attack on Israel itself and not through its proxies such as Hezbollah in Lebanon, which has been striking Israel almost every day since the start of the war in Gaza. This would be a dangerous escalation in the long-running tensions between the two countries. The U.S. has vowed to respond if that happens and a top American general has been sent to Israel to discuss possible action. Recapping the top story at three, Deputy President Paul Mashadile has expressed his satisfaction with the Etebuni Metro's plan to deal with the city's extensive water and sewage problems. The Durban Metro is Mashadile's first stop after being appointed as head of the task team on water challenges in the country. I'll be back at the bottom of the hour for SFM News. I'm Eva Chipa. And coming up in your sports, the Sour Sharks welcome back Eben Itzabeth. Sundown's policy cripples Amatax in the Netbank Cup showdown today. And Australian Grand Prix returns as season opener in 2025. I'll have more details at 3.30. And we would buy 500 cars and we would buy 500 more. So sell your car for the best price and we won't think about it twice. We buy The easiest way to sell your car by far. The boys of Steve Parker resist to leave the pitch without a ticket to the semis. But there's a big problem. Kevin Hunt's boys say the last dance of happiness belongs to them. This is the Netbank Cup quarterfinal battle. Stellies versus Matatanza Pitori on Saturday 13 April at 2.30 p.m. Live on SABC1 and SABC radio stations. Also available on SABC Plus and SABCSport.com. Hashtag we love it here. Proudly brought to you by SABC Sport. For the love of the game.
The National Pulse with Ashraf Garda on SAFM. You're listening to the National Pulse weekdays 3 to 6 p.m. to 6 p.m. It certainly is the National Pulse, and, and that really is for you and me to both get a, a feel of the National Pulse wherever you may be, right? So having said that, let me tell you about yesterday. Yesterday was the day of Eid, the day of Eid al-Fitr, the breaking of the fast after the, the 30-day dawn to dusk fast um, of Ramadan that, that Muslims commemorate or uh, engage in all throughout uh, throughout the world, right? So I attended the, the Eid prayers at the outdoor um, Brixton Mosque uh, in Johannesburg, and the keynote speaker was uh, the minister, Naledi Pandor, followed by the Reverend Frank uh, Chikani. Now, I'm not going to talk about them, not at all, Okay. What I want to talk about is this, because this is what came through for me. You know, South Africans genuinely have a respect for people of other religions and other cultures. This country, I mean, roughly 80%, maybe slightly more Christians, about 3 to 5% are Muslim, similar amount um, follow the Hindu faith, uh, a small amount follow the Jewish faith, we have others who follow the Rastafari faith, and there's even other religious faiths, right, smaller ones, right? But... I've been, you know, tweeting about my my Ramadan experience um, throughout the month, and the response and the awareness or the the willingness to be aware of of what's happening around Ramadan for people who are not Muslim, I think, is just so impressive, right? And then you get like the day of Eid yesterday. And then the Eid messages come from all around the country, people WhatsApping you, wherever they are. They're not Muslim. They're just across the board, right? And that gets me thinking once again, about this point, that South Africa, really, we have many problems, but we are a remarkably tolerant country. We make space for all religious persuasions. We open up our spaces. So whether it's the churches, the mosques, the mandirs, the, um, the, the temples, the synagogues, we make space. And I think that's remarkable. That's also manifested, for example, by the inauguration of our president every five years. And we'll see it again this year, where starting from Nelson Mandela, again, all religious leaders in a predominantly Christian country will be present there, saying their prayers for the, for the goodness of the leadership that we, see, or that we speak or that we seek for our country. Now, what am I saying here? I'm saying to you, as we get a sense of what we feel for the national parts of our country, do not underestimate that. Do not minimize that. That privilege, that right that we have, it's enshrined in our constitution. It's not a right in many other countries in the world. Okay, So even if you are allowed to profess your faith in another country, how outwardly do you practice that faith? Does does your that country open the spaces for you, for you to able to not just profess the faith, but to actively participate in that faith um, very, very publicly, no matter who you may be, as I'm, I'm suggesting that I do right now. And I'm suggesting, therefore, that let's not minimize this. South Africa, as a country, you are the champions of religious expression. And that's a great thumbs up, okay? I'm Ashraf Garda, and that's my point. SAFM has signed a code of conduct that is enforced by the Broadcasting Complaints Commission of South Africa. Under the code, we are committed to giving news that is accurate, comment that is fair, and programming that is not harmful, does not amount to hate speech, or contain violence or explicit sex. If you think we are not living up to that code, then you can inform the Broadcasting Complaints Commission of South Africa. Direct any complaints in writing to the Broadcasting Complaints Commission of South Africa. PO Box 142365. Craig Hall 2024 Fax to 011 326 3198 or an email to bccsa at nabsa.co.za For more information, please visit www.bccsa.co.za The National Pulse with Ashraf Garda Weekdays 3 to 6 p.m. So I'm suggesting that South Africa are the champions of of allowing multi-religious expression. I'm not saying we're perfect. We have problems. But overall, I think we do remarkably well. Do you agree with me? Do you do you 
agree that we actually allow, we open up spaces wherever we are in the country. And that's one of the great things about this country. Let me know. I'd love to know what you think. And you can do it in a couple of ways. You can call in 86 You can WhatsApp and that's text or voice notes. 0614-104-107. Simple. 0614-104-107. And 104107 reflects to the, the meter band where you can catch us all around the country. And you can also tweet it out to um, the SFM Radio uh, presence on, um, on on the X platform. So tag SFM Radio, tag me, Ashraf Ganta. Do use the hashtag, the National Pulse. And you tell me, do you agree that we are the champions of uh, multi-religious expression in this country and we can stand head and shoulders above most countries, if not all countries in the world, in doing just that. And you tell me why. I certainly would love to know from you. Okay, Let's talk about something that is particularly topical with regard to students in our country. And uh, that is the issue of the, the student funding organization, ANISFAS. Now, understand that the minister of uh, higher education, Bladed Zamandes, dissolved the board of ANISFAS, saying it's a step towards saving and protecting the gains of our revolution. I'm quoting him, right? So what has happened now, Freeman Novalo has been appointed as the administrator of the scheme in the absence of this board, right? So let's understand and make sense of it, certainly not from what he thinks, but certainly from what the student organizations think. Now, Asibe Dlanjwa is the spokesperson for the South African Union of Students, and I certainly want to get my thoughts uh, speaking to Asibe. I appreciate your time, and welcome to the National Pulse. You and your listeners, and thank you for having us. Thank you. Well, I I would think either way, the dissolving of the (laughs) Anisfas board would get your pulse racing. (laughs) Not really. I mean, but it, I suppose it's something that we welcome, and I'll tell you why we have reservations. I suppose to the extent to which uh, the minister wants to appoint an administrator, <clears throat> uh, because uh, our appreciation is that based on uh, in the history and in the precedence of the times where NSPAS would have appointed an administrator, uh, there was never necessarily any uh, positive developments from that, nor in fact, at times, it would even exacerbate the situation. However, we must welcome uh, the decision to dissolve the board purely on the basis that it was uh, populated by incompetent people who were running the scheme to the ground. And the crisis we find ourselves in is a direct result and a product of the incompetence that had been displayed perpetually and consistently by the board. So they are dissolving speaks to, uh, I suppose, uh, and a recognition of and a vindication of our stance, our long, uh, uh, you know, standing stance that uh, these people did not have the requisite capacity to be able to drive and ensure that this 50 billion rand scheme remains afloat and is able to respond to the needs and the challenges of the poor mm. and the working class. So, and, and when this this scheme, as you call it, you know, NSFS was was set up, right? I mean, what, what what for you was the primary gain to come out of that scheme? And I take it that it's fallen very, very short of those lofty <laughs> ideals. Look, I mean, the scheme uh, probably is one of the most uh, a flagship successes uh, of the uh, a democratic government in our democratic dispensation because uh, <clears throat> the scheme was meant to broaden access into institutions of higher learning, particularly for the poor and the, and the working class, who <clears throat> at one point, uh, for instance, uh, particularly for instance, <clears throat> a, a black students from a, a, a disprivileged background who would have only consisted at one point of just a mere 5% of students in the entire sector, especially in universities, and now are sitting well over 70% to 80%. So it has been a huge contributor. Uh, We know of many uh, 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 professionals, doctors, uh, 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 teachers and nurses who are a direct product and investment of this particular scheme, who outside the scheme would not have been able to, a, 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 a access institutions of Ireland. You've got institutions, for example, the University of Forte, that has over 90% students that are funded by this particular scheme. So uh, the, the, the purpose of the scheme is clear. The impact that it has made cannot be disputed. And this is why we are jealous of this scheme and felt that we needed to raise our voices and protect the scheme against vultures who see this as a quick 
as a get rich quick scheme. Mm. Has, has that has that in fact happened? I mean, the way you see that vultures have seen and actively been able to prey on this get rich quick scheme for, with fifty billion rands, as you suggest. Sorry, can you please repeat that? I, I was saying. I mean, you you mentioned um, the scheme is now worth. 50 billion rands. I mean, do, do you see that, that vultures have been able to prey on the 50 billion rands and been, been able to pocket and siphon mm. money out of the scheme? Absolutely. Uh, although not necessarily successfully, but the, the state of instability that we are seeing now was based, it was because of attempts to try and loot the scheme and they failed dismally. And now we find ourselves where we are today. Uh, there has been, I suppose, a few instances, for instance, when university officials at the universe, uh, at the WUSU uh, working with uh, some of the service providers uh, siphoned out uh, 12 million rand uh, using a, a student. Uh, so there has been those cases here and there. There has been uh, cases that have been investigated, for instance, by the SIU. There has been institutions, universities, for instance, that have sought to loot the scheme. Uh, with the latest UJ having to pay back 300 million rand. So there has been a few attempts, and not necessarily, we would not say they were, suc- they were altogether successful because the scheme still remains afloat and it's still been able to <clears throat> largely meet the needs of the poor and the working mm. class, except for uh, what is clearly incompetent at the level of the officials that are given some of these responsibilities to be able to ensure that they administer the fund in the mm. best possible way. Now, obviously, the Minister of Higher Education agrees with the with the incompetence that you suggest because he's dissolved the board, right? But but for you, what, what, what are the levels of incompetence that's come through for you that so disgruntles you and, and, the, and the student movement that you represent? Uh, look, <clears throat> the first one... <clears throat> Uh, the, 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 there are two levels uh, uh, at the level of the incompetence. The first one is that you've got an executive leadership at NSFAS that is absolutely inept and absolutely useless. As we speak, by the way, at NSFAS there is no CEO, there is no CFO, there is no CIO, <clears throat> uh, and these are all. Some of these people would have left because uh, there would have been a compromise uh, in some of the, uh, in you know, in, uh, in, in, in in shady behavior. Uh, but the bottom line is that. <clears throat> One, it is incapacitated. Two, of those people that are there, and they have displayed, even considered to by the minister several times, they have displayed the highest level of incompetence. There is not a single stakeholder who has interacted with NSFAS, whether it be the student, whether it be the university, whether it be the parent, who cannot affirm what I am saying today, that they have some of the most useless people to ever walk the face of the earth unable to respond to the child, to the needs and the challenges mm. of students. Mm-hmm. So uh, those are some of the, you, you, from the call center all the way to the highest office, it is just a riddled with incompetence. So that's the first level of incompetence that we speak of. Mm-hmm. And then there's the level of, <clears throat> at the level of governance, where we see that there could have been a board that might have been put together uh, uh, without necessarily considering the highest level of skills and expertise to be able to provide the necessary governance and oversight. So that would be the second level of incompetence which would have seen, which would have now resulted in the dissolution of the board. Then failure, because the decisions that were, for instance, taken, and some of them worth millions and hundreds of millions and billions, uh, were overseen were, were, uh, by the board. So it means that the board failed to provide the necessary mm, oversight mm, mm, such mm. that we find ourselves where we are today. How, I mean, what would you therefore tell the Minister of Higher Education? I mean, Minister Zimande is, is, and maybe would be listening to the show right now, but, but he's, been, he's been involved in, in, in that role for a very, very long time. So if you're saying that the board has failed dismally, I mean, somebody appointed the board and then allowed the board to run, isn't it? Uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, we know, and one of the things we would probably tell the minister, for instance, is one is that, uh, 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 you know, the, the minister must not, I don't know whether he must not be shy or maybe, we don't know whether it's deliberate or not, that we consistently appoint a, a, a incompetent people to a point where it would suggest that incompetence is inherent. Uh, uh, to the human, because uh, it can be possible that everyone who's appointed at NSFAS is not able to finish their term because of incompetence. So it means that we have perpetually and consistently made 
a, 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 an effort to ensure that we employ some of the most useless people because on the, I can tell you for the last seven to eight years, there's probably not a single executive at NSFAS who's been able to finish their term, including board for that matter. And why do they get dissolved then? It's because of incompetence. So mm. one of the things we would say is that the, the skills are in abundance in the country of people who can take responsibility and ensure that the scheme is ran in a manner that is effective. So that would be the first thing to ensure. We would say to the minister, mm. he must ensure that he employs the most credible and the most qualified people, which has not been happening. So, the second thing... Yeah. Yes. Carry on, carry on. And the second thing, there is a level of incoherence in the higher education sector. You've got an NSPAS, which is a public institution that often pulls uh, in one direction, and then you've got public institution universities that are often pulling it a different direction. We have had, for instance, institutions. Now, whether you think it was right or wrong, the implementation of the direct payment system, it was wrong for public institutions, universities, to, uh, to directly a sabotage, uh, 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 the, the direct payment system through the withholding of information, etc. These are all things that seek to suggest that the sector is incoherent and it would seem that the minister, if he's going to lead the sector properly, he must be able to find mm. a manner in which he brings about coherence into the sector. All right, so, and, uh, yeah. so here's the last thing. We're, we're going to wrap up now. I mean, you made a point about uh, you know consistent appointment of incompetent people, and I'm quoting you directly. When I introduced the, the topic to you and I asked, is your pulse racing? And you, you were rather guarded about that, right? So, so therefore, you're guarded for a reason for all the things you've just mentioned, right? W- what is the first issue you're going to look for in the appointment of the new board that will give you a thumbs up? Look, the appointment of the new board probably will not happen, in, happen not in the next few months. Uh, but w- the most immediate thing that is, has happened is the appointment of the administrator. We have seen uh, 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 the administrator, for instance, we have reports of who is that uh, person. And what we would expect from that specific person would be to bring about stability and restore the credibility of the scheme by ensuring that the right people are doing the right jobs. And one of the, and what does that mean for the students on the, uh, 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 in the university? It means we must have people who will ensure that the allowances of students are paid to students on time and that the decision that had been taken by the previous board to get rid of the illegally appointed service providers using taxpayers' money are gotten rid of uh, and that we have a credible and an effective manner to distribute allowances to right. students. That's an important wish list. Thanks for your time. I say amen to all of those things. Um, Asibet Lanjwa, the spokesperson for the South African Union of Students, reflecting to the dissolving now of the uh, NSFAS board and the appointment of a um, an administrator. There's, there are problems there, absolutely. There are also problems in Mali. We'll talk about that in a moment. The Market Update, Monday to Thursday, 6 to 7 p.m. Want to stay ahead of the financial game? Join us tonight from 6 to 7 p.m. for an insightful journey through the day's market developments, financial updates, and investment news. Tune in for your daily dose of financial intelligence as we navigate the twists and turns of the financial landscape with expert insights. Only on the SAFM Market Update. SFM Market Update with Jimmy Muyaha. If you're active on social media and love SAFM, we hope you'll take a moment to like or follow our SAFM page on Facebook and Twitter. These are the best places to find all the guest information, conversations and stories you love from your favorite presenters along with regular updates from SABC News. And don't forget, you can send your questions to feedback at safm.co.za. SAFM, leading the conversation. You are listening to The National Pulse with Ashraf Garda. And do send your comments if you have either via call-in or WhatsApp uh, around the issue of um, of Anasfas, as well as my point about South Africa being the champions of multi-religious expression, something we need to value highly. Any thoughts you have on that, I certainly would love to know right away. Let's talk about the goings-on in Mali, the huge problems in that country. David uh, Matsanga is with me, Dr. David Matsanga. In fact, we may have just lost him for a moment. Let's connect with him in just a second or two. There are, however, in fact, we've got him now. Dr. David Matsanga is a political analyst and expert on diplomatic relations. Dr. Matsanga, I appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us here on the National Pulse. 
Thank you very much for calling me and for all listeners across Africa and the world. Thank you. Right. So w- w- what's the pulse rate like in Mali now? I think not too good considering some issues about multi multiple problems in that country. First of all, there is no multiple problem. The biggest problem of Mali at the moment and the most focus for Mali is to eradicate terrorism. As you are aware, Mali is faced with terrorism of ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and other affiliates that have gathered into that territory of Mali. So their preoccupation at the moment, the government preoccupation, is to finish once for all. The army is determined to wipe out terrorism, and then they can talk about the rest of politics and other democratic gains that we are talking about. Okay. We now, now I think that I think the main, uh, yes. I think I think let's get this right. I mean, there's excellent terror on the civilian population that it would be natural to try and stem that out. I get that. Okay. However. The, the ruling junta now deciding to ban all political activities in the country and to impose a ban on media coverage of political events. I mean, that is authoritarian. Yes, but the, the, you should understand that there is a question of how do you mix the two right now? Political activities, when one part of Mali is under siege from terror attacks of terrorist ISIS, Al-Qaeda, Boko Haram, and the rest of all these affiliates that are in North African cell. They are there. They are fighting. They are killing people. They are killing the same civilians. How will the civilians participate in politics, democracy, and and other things when there is war and uh, they are terrorists still attacking the government installations, killing the same people? The media shutdown is what I think is extreme. But I I don't think it is going to be permanent because they need also to be told uh, that uh, the world that did you need to have access so that we know what goes on in Mali. Mm. So are you suggesting, therefore, the citizens of Mali are supportive of the, the media blackout at this point in time, and they're also supportive of uh, the, the banning of other you know, political discussion from, from multi, multi-political parties because of the issues you've mentioned? I, I think you know the reason why the army took over power is because of the co- confusion of the mini- of the civilian government that was there. The extension of the constitution, you know there is a habit in Africa at the moment for civilian governments to extend after elections. You saw what was happening in Senegal. Mr. Makassar wanted to extend the term limits uh, the, 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 and the rule for another term and also change the dates. So civilian government of Mali previously, before this army came in to overthrow him, was doing the same. The opposition was not even rhyming, who did not agree of the results that were conducted after the elections. So I think the government's policy in Mali, I've been there, I've been there twice, and I know what it, they want. The policy is this, is to make sure that people understand what the democracy and the elections are. You people in South Africa are lucky. South Africa is like it's one of the peaceful, the most peaceful country on in terms of elections. You elect, you vote, you go home, you sit, you wait for results. Mm, I'm mm. telling you, most of these African countries, including mine, where I'm born in Uganda, we don't elect and go home. We elect and pick stones and pick fire and pick pangas, rungus, to start chasing our opponents and to just Okay, to D- D- David, David in, in 20 seconds, because we need to wrap up, therefore, of all the things, and you've mentioned two things about changes they've made, what's the one thing they needed to fix Mali? One thing to fix Mali is to route out terrorism. Once terrorism is over, the civilian rule will return, the, the, the army will go back to the barracks, and the people will live peacefully. Okay. Now, less than that, they will not accept... Got that, root out activity. terrorism... 
David Matsanya yep. saying that I wonder if others would agree. Thank you for your time. Uh, political analyst and expert in diplomatic relations. And then the army would go back to the barracks. Would they really do that? You tell me. Any opinions on what's going on in Mali? Maybe you know even more. You can certainly tell us again. Call in or WhatsApp. Let's get the news headlines now. Uh, here's Eva Chipa. In your news making headlines for the Sawa, MK Party spokesperson Mshamulon Lela says Chief Justice Raymond Zondo will be conflicted should he participate in hearing the IEC's appeal against an electoral court judgment regarding MK leader Jacob Zuma. The IEC has filed an urgent appeal to the Constitutional Court challenging the electoral court for overturning its decision to bar Zuma from standing in the May elections. In other news, Deputy President Paul Mashatile has expressed his satisfaction with the Ete Gwini Metro's plan to deal with the city's extensive water and sewage problems. The Durban Metro is Mashatile's first stop after being appointed as head of a task team on water challenges in the country. And lastly, a top Chinese official is visiting North Korea for the first time in five years. I have more stories at 4. For SFM News, I'm Eva Chipa. AFM, guiding you through the rush hour traffic. Our 21 highway in focus again today. It's a problem going northbound away from the airport. There are lane closures just before the Benoni exit, the R23 off ramp. So the R21, if you're leaving the airport, heading up from Kenton Park, it all gets a bit busy. Uh, going the other way, a collision at Griffith Road. So heading south from the airport on the 21. That's quite slow as well today. Uh, broken down vehicle on the way up through Midrand. It's stuck there just by the old Joburg Road. Actually quite heavy uh, from around about Olly Funds, Fontaine Road is where you'll pick up the queue. And an earlier crash on the Mike 1 South had parked at, um, at uh, Crown. Uh, causing a delay, a big uh, backlog coming down from Oxford Road, so from Parktown heading south through central Jerburg, so backed up. Uh, the M19 going out of Durban, there's been a crash hotspot just recently, another one today by Dunkeld Road, so it's quite a heavy queue from uh, Reservoir Hillside as you line up and, and move your way very slowly out towards uh, New Germany and the um, and the Claremont area. Mgetter Road at Springfield Park, looking quite slow, the N2 both ways, between Mgetter Road and Spaghetti Junction, queued up as well. And Cape Town this afternoon, the N7, still no traffic lights at Milton Road, I think it's about day two or three with some queuing pressure going south through the Goodwood area and some delays leaving Fishhook, the main road, all backed up through to Clavelli, slow on your way through towards the Cork Bay area. Rob Byrne, SAFM Traffic. This is SAFM Sports with Dumin Khabele. Right, let's get to sport. I never know during sport whether it's a week when it's a weekend. You know, do you reflect or it's looking ahead? We look ahead to what's coming up and mm-hmm. a lot of rugby to look forward to. A very good afternoon to you and Ashraf. Welcome back. And uh, we you. start things off with uh, rugby. Well, the Sharks have been boosted by the return of Lock Eben Etzabeth, who's uh, back from injury for their clash against Edinburgh in Durban tomorrow in the quarterfinals of the Challenge Cup. And uh, it's the only change to the Sharks team that thrashed uh, Zebra 47-3 at uh, Kings Park last weekend. Elizabeth replaces Cornet Rall, who moves to the bench in place of Gerbrand Hrobla and the other Changes on the bench where replacement hooker Dan Eusta comes in for Karen van Furen. Meanwhile, World Rugby says that it's looking to introduce extended half times and more water breaks during matches played in hot and humid conditions. Players traveling to uh, play in warmer environments could also be asked to uh, complete a heat education module. Other measures include encouraging players to keep on damp shirts rather than putting a fresh dry shirt that might increase body temperature. Then in football, Amatax will have to find uh, ways of getting past Mamelodi Sundowns tonight without two of their key players. This is due to the loan agreement policy between the two teams. The Brazilians have allowed strikers Tabangs Banyoni and uh, Promise Mkuma to uh, spend the 2023-24 season at their rivals in the Monzepe Foundation Championship, but uh, the duo are unable to face their parent club. And coach Lisa Mutawung uh, has admitted that Banyoni in particular will be greatly missed in the Nebang Cup quarterfinal tie at the Lucas Muribe Stadium this evening. I listened to, in fact, I was watching the match. Uh, I heard him saying that. Uh, but one thing about Sundowns, it, no matter how they play, they're able to get results somehow, you know. So one has to obviously be in cognizance of that. Uh, they don't have to be at their best to win matches. Maybe the issue could be we want to score a lot of goals. You 
Then moving on to athletics, Kenya's Eloid Kipchoge says that he expects to make history with his third consecutive Olympic marathon gold medal at this year's Games in Paris. Kipchoge is one of three athletes who have won two Olympic gold medals in the marathon when they retain their titles. And when asked about when he's retiring, he has reiterated that his commitment is to trying to inspire people of all levels to keep on the move. And in things off with motorsport, the Australian Grand Prix will return to its traditional position as the first race of the new season in 2025. Melbourne, which will host the race weekend from the 14th to the 16th of March, had held the first race virtually every year since it made its debut in 1996. But it has not done so since 2019 after COVID-19 pandemic led to Bahrain taking over. And uh, Melbourne will be followed by races in China and Japan before the two events in the Middle East. Well, that's it. It's a wrap from my side. For SAFM Sport, I'm Dumin Kapel. Here, there, and everywhere. SAFM 104.6 FM in Twane. X at SAFM Radio and at Ashraf Garda. Right, let's get those WhatsApps uh, coming. Let's get, uh, you know, text or voice notes. We'll get the calls as well. Any thoughts you have on the issues we've raised and as far as the issue of of, uh, champions of religious uh, expression. That's what South Africa is, according to me. You tell me why. Um, you may want to pick up on the issue of Mali. And we'll talk about the the IEC taking the, the, the Jacob Zuma ruling now to the Constitutional Court. We're going to talk about that pretty shortly. But again, you may have your own opinion about that too. And you can certainly voice uh, that opinion, right? Okay, let's get to some of the callers in the meantime. So Colin's on the line from Cape Town. Colin, let's talk about the President and Ramadan. Colin, hi. Hi, I hope you had a good day yesterday, Ashraf. I certainly did. You know, with with the day of Eid, you're you're mukh from the morning, a lot to do early morning, you do 50 things, uh, well, go to the mosque, open air prayers, put, eat, put your, everything, your, but it's great. Put, put yourself on a scale and see if you picked up weight. I'll do that tomorrow, not today, because I'm afraid, very afraid. Um, Ashraf, <laughs> yeah. uh, do you know, I've heard a few phone calls over the last week and so and so. You know, um, I believe... That Cyril uh, Ramaphosa, I heard him saying on the radio, around about November, I think, or somewhere, that um, the ANC is going to win this election. We've got a secret weapon. Mm-hmm. Now, people are wondering if that secret weapon wasn't now the war it's going on. Now, I believe uh, Lady Pando is a Muslim. Now, I want to know, these people that are, are going to church now. Did they go last year or the year before? You know what I mean? I'm not talking about the Muslims now. I'm talking about the ANC people. Yeah. And they're going to church meetings and this and that, and they're sort of condemning the war and this and that and that. No, but people always go to church. I mean, yes, people always yes, go and people always don't hang go. Hang on. Yeah. Not, our, not our ministers and... And, and, and Ramaphosa, the way they are no, doing it. No, no, no. But, but I mean, Colin, again, you see, I always challenge you when you when you make Correct. outrageous statements. What I'm saying to you is, does Ramaphosa go every week to church? I can't tell you. Does he, yeah. always, does, he yeah. does he go to church sometimes? Yes, he does. Does he never, ever go? That's not true. And that's that's yeah. the same with no. many other, even other political leaders, by the way, of yes. of the opposition parties. They go to church. They go to mosques. Yes. Those are Muslim. You know, they go to they go to, to Hindu temples. They go to synagogues if, if they're part of the Jewish yes, faith. Correct. They do go. I understand yeah. it. I understand. But in the last months, the election year, there's more meetings. There are more, go- there are more of them are going to church and... Uh, it's sort of like a campaigning. It's it's not a church service. They in a, they campaign also. This is a what I call a, a political thing. And you know, uh, if um, my lady Pando was not a Muslim, I'm sure she wouldn't be so involved. Now we are wondering. No, but how do you say you're church? sure? You Hang see, on. this is again. Hold it, but hold it. You have to. You know, this is the point. When you say I'm sure. That means you just know it, right? I'm saying to you, the ANC, now whether you and I agree with the ANC or not is another question mark, but the ANC's position in supporting uh, the Palestinian issue has been around since Nelson Mandela. Believe it has been. So Naledi Pando is 
the international relations head, she takes her right. orders and instructions from the South African government. To, to say that she would be less involved, you sure, if she was not Muslim, you don't know that because you just don't know that, and neither do I, actually. No, yeah, but you know, Cyril Ramaphosa makes one wonder when he talks about his secret weapon at the ANC of God. And this, to me, um, they are more involved now with this and uh, yesterday I heard him talk on a radio, Ramaphosa. He was thanking the Muslim community uh, that fought for freedom against apartheid. And, but he never spoke about the colored people and the whites. There were whites and coloreds also no, no. that fought for freedom. Okay, Colin, let's, let's, let, let's leave it there. I'll give you my thoughts. Thanks for that call. Let me, let me tell you this much. He spoke yesterday directly to the Muslim community because he was speaking at a Muslim event celebrating the day of Eid. Now, somebody invited him and he accepted. And he goes to the Muslim events, the Jewish events, the Hindu events. They go to all of them. They go because they're heads of state. They also go, and I, I give you that, because there's also political influence that they carry when they do just that. So I would be surprised if he goes to a, a Muslim religious day of Eid event and then he speaks about general issues. He was really very specific about Muslim issues. It makes complete sense to me. The same way if he went to a, a Hindu religious festival, he would speak to the Hindu community. The other issue that you raise, which I think is important, is this, that are more politicians going to churches to pray? I don't know. But if they are, maybe there's a reason because maybe they feel they need to pray to win an election. I don't know. Okay. The second part of it is, are they going and are they getting onto platforms at churches and mosques and synagogues and mandirs and temples um, to be able to canvas? I don't know, but I do I do agree with you on one thing. They possibly can influence a religious constituency if they are given a platform. But that's a bit different to the president because the president, most religious organizations invite the president to speak at a religious event on their religious day. And that is a reflection of what I spoke about earlier on, which is that South Africa has this remarkable uh, tolerance of multiple religious persuasion. So if we have a new president uh, come May 29 who's not of the ANC, would I expect the same? Absolutely. Let's get a let's get another in fact he also went to the Easter services, Ramaposa that is, just to make the point. Let's see if there's some WhatsApps we can play. I I can hear you clearly when you talk passionately about religion in South Africa. The status of religion in South Africa. I so wish even the business it should be like that. Because now if you see the the, the, the problems around this puzzle shop there at the communities, it's not okay. And most of the people who are coming from outside selling things that are not okay for the people of South Africa. And they are just starting their own thing. They should refrain from that. Thank you very much. All right, there we are. So saying thumbs up about the religious, uh, uh, in this case here, multiple, multi-religious persuasions. But what about the issues of of you know, highlighting businesses. Well, I think, you know, the way our township businesses operate, I think needs to be looked at and re-looked at and, and taken very seriously. In fact, I probably need to speak to someone uh, from, from TE, TEA Township uh, Enterprise uh, Association, right? Bulelani, Bala Bala, and probably get his thoughts about how township businesses operate. I think it's really important. But thanks for that. Thanks for that contribution. Let's get another bo- uh, voice note. Hi, Asraf. Good afternoon. I'm Dukes calling from Kwakwa. Uh, according to the guy who was the analyzer, I think he was reading the mind of majority of the Malian. A politician, we don't want them anymore. There was just a sellout. What this guy achieved in past two years is better than what the politician achieved in past, past 30 years. So according to we, the Malian, the majority of the Malian don't need the politician. They're just a sellout. Thank you. They don't need politicians, they just tell us. But here's the problem. If if the military runs countries and they run them in perpetuity, then then where what happens to your vote? What happens to your you may seemingly have a better life, I get that. But what happens to your vote? I mean you can't you can't shift them because they're gonna be there as long as they want to. How do you get that right when you take away that right to vote in a party or to vote 
them out as well. We're going to talk about the IEC in just a moment. I want to check if there's a. Uh, I want to check if there's a WhatsApp. There's another WhatsApp. Uh, in fact, by the way, talking about the IEC, right? Um, so this is important, right? Now you are aware. Let, let's get this right, and I'm paraphrasing. Um, the IEC ruled that former President Jacob Zuma, his image, he can't stand as the leader of the MK party. That was challenged. You know that was um, uh, that, that challenge was upheld. So, in, in fact, what happened was the IEC's position then was overturned and, and the MK party now can have uh, former President Jacob Zuma up as its religious head. Having said that, right, uh, there's been a challenge now from the IEC. They've taken the matter to the Constitutional Court, understandably so. Uh, but here's an interesting one, and that that could play out in the next few days as we count down to May 29. In the meantime, Terry Telani, who's the executive chairperson of the Institute of Election Management Services in Africa, but former head of the IEC, that is significant, right? He, in fact, is suggesting that the IEC should not take this issue on appeal and simply put their focus on ensuring the election is free and fair. This is what he said. I think it's self-inflicted pain for the, for the IEC because to start with, uh, they are dealing with a candidature of one person. And I don't understand why they should be focusing so much energy on that when the electoral court has already made the decision uh, on that matter. Their focus should rather be on preparations for the elections. Uh, they can't be, uh, you know, going to the constitutional court before they even get uh, the, 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 the the judgment as I've indicated. But what is even more strange for me is that they are going to the constitutional court uh, to get clarity on section uh, 47 subsection 1e why subsection 1e why are they not focusing on the powers as encapsulated within section 47 as a whole there is a b c d and e you can't be going on an urgent basis and focusing on uh, only that section that deals with a criminal record when there are so many exclusions in section 47 they if they were really worried about section 47 they were not going to be singling out one aspect of section 47 because all those exclusions carry the same weight uh, there is no hierarchy of um you know value in terms of the sections that are reflected within section 47 so a person of unsound mind, a person of who is insolvent, a person who is in the employ of state um, and getting remuneration from the city, all those are the exclusions that are uh, covered in Section 47. But to even make it easier for the Commission to understand that this is not their power, uh, amongst those exclusions, it also indicates that the people who, for instance, are excluded from uh, these exclusions, if I, if I may put it that way, it is the president, the president and members of the cabinet. And the, the reason why they're excluded is not because they are clean. It is because the president and members of the cabinet hold office until a new president is elected. In other words, you cannot uh, use that provision for them uh, because... Uh, they hold office until when a new president is elected. In other words, all members would have been shown in at the time when now uh, the president and cabinet me members uh, vacate office. So, for the members of the for the members of the of the of the assembly, um, uh, what kicks in is actually, actually section one forty one forty nine. Uh, section 2 of the Constitution, because there it says the assembly dissolves a day before the elections. So should... So there's a difference. There's a difference between how you treat the cabinet members and the president mm -hmm. because their term of office ends after they've been shown in and the president is elected. So in your then, view then, pardon me, pardon me uh -huh. for coming in there, in your view then, what would have been the correct mm. way for this appeal to then have been launched? Is it still, because I'm listening to what you're saying, so is it then the IEC that needed to do this or should it have been the person who objected 
who then should have taken this matter to the constitutional court for clarity? Yeah, my, my view firstly is uh, IC should not have even started uh, this issue at all. It does not belong to them. But even in the event that they were responsible for this particular section, remember uh, the chief electoral officer can object in terms of section 30 of the electoral act uh, to the candidacy of any person. Why uh, didn't the chief electoral officer, because if as, assuming uh, that the IEC believes that indeed these are their responsibilities, it means they would have done due diligence on each and every person uh, that is there uh, amongst those 15,000 people or, or, or people who are uh, uh, candidates in these elections. And then after that, uh, they would be having confirmatory information that would actually indicate that indeed the person who's objecting, maybe the chief electoral officer would also be, would have ob objected based on the information that they would have done. But they did not do any of them. They never checked the eligibility of all those 15,000 people in terms of the constitution, in terms of section 47 that they're trying to invoke. They waited for people to object. Now, once people object, it is not their issue. It is the issue of the person who is objecting. If it is not their issue, the chief electoral officer who has the power to object would have objected because Section 30 gives him the power to do so. Okay, there we are. What do you make of that from Terry Tselani? the now executive chairperson of the Institute of Election Management Services in Africa, once of himself, the IEC. I'm sure you have strong views on that. You can call in 86 2032 You can WhatsApp in text form or voice note form 614 If you are tweeting out, just tag us on the on the X platform. You tag SFM Radio, tag me, Ashraf Ganda. Do use the hashtag the National Pulse. So... Let's try and make sense of all of this. Now, that interview, by the way, was put together by uh, Bongiwe Zwani, who spoke to Terry Tselani earlier on uh, this, around lunchtime today, in fact. So what do you make of all of this? Let's get the thoughts, however, Professor Chris, Chris Malan, who's a constitutional jurist from Pretoria. Uh, Professor Malan, appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us here on The National Pulse. Good afternoon. It's my pleasure. Thank you. So, so you've, you've heard... Terry Tselani himself, not just a caller, but but someone of of of, of huge significance within electoral management, uh, pronouncing on on these issues of appeal and 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 rejections and who can stand and who can't stand. Well, what do you make of it? Uh, I actually think, with all due respect, that he's uh, wrong. As a matter of fact, in fact, I think he's entirely wrong. <laughs> uh, he basically made two points. Uh, the first one is that he said that um, uh, what the uh, IEC should have done was to uh, appeal on all the grounds pertaining to Section 46, 47 of the Constitution, and not only with regard to Section 47.1e, uh, which is the ground uh, upon which uh, initially Mr. Zuma was excluded. Well, the IEC cannot do that because there is not a live issue, an actual issue on any other of the grounds. The only ground on which there is a live issue is this one. Uh, on all the other is aspects, there is no issue. So it cannot appeal on a question that is not an actual issue. The only matter on which there is an issue is this one. That's the only one which is susceptible for an appeal. Uh, not none of the other issues. Uh, so precisely for that reason, it doesn't make sense to involve any of the other aspects, any of the other clauses, provisions of Section 47 in this matter. Okay, so that's and the then, one, and there's another, right? Yeah. Yes, and then and then secondly, um, <clears throat> I have a lot of sympathy for the uh, for the Independent Electoral Commission, uh, which make it actually incumbent upon them. Uh, in this particular situation to appeal. Uh, the clear meaning of Section 47.1e uh, 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 is that a person that has uh, 
that uh, on, on which a, a sentence has been imposed of a year or longer, like in the case of Mr. Zuma, is in fact, according to the clear reading of Section 47 uh, 1E, is not susceptible to be a candidate, is not il- eligible to be, to be a candidate. Mm-hmm. Um, but in this particular case, the electoral court has ruled that it can, in fact, stand. And I think that leaves the, in the, the, the IEC in a very difficult position. What must it do if it is confronted with a person in future in a similar situation? Uh, must it, uh, in a similar or a very similar situation than Mr. Zuma, must it rule such person ineligible to, to stand as a candidate? Mm-hmm. Or must it actually close its eyes and say, well, no, such a person can, must, must it rule that, it can, can, that such a person can stand or, or that it cannot stand? Okay, so, so, so the point... Act, so, it's so the, actually in limbo. He doesn't know what to do. Un- understandably, it, it, and, and you know there's it, been accusations about uh, Janet Love of, of, of being biased. And so again, the reputation of a leading member of yeah. the organization is at stake here. And, and I would assume they would have to fight back. But having said that, so let's say they, like you, would disregard the advice of Terry Tselani and they've taken it on appeal. What, in your opinion, would be the basis of the appeal? What would they be saying? Uh, the, the, uh, well, the, the basis of the bill would be simply this. If you, if you look at the, the clear meaning, the literal meaning of Section 47.1e, the literal meaning excludes a person in a position like Mr. Zuma to actually stand in the election. So the only basis upon which there can be any grounds for actually including Mr. Zuma is if you have another kind of reading, which is which does not square with the actual literal reading. Only on such a basis can Mr. Zuma actually stand. So they can actually just base their argument on the actual clear literal reading uh, of uh, of the section around. Mm. That, that that would be that would be their their. their, their uh, the, the basis, which to my mind is a sound basis, which is not to say that there might be an alternative reading or an alternative approach towards interpreta- the, the interpretation of the section, but no doubt the IEC would have a very sound basis for actually approaching the Constitutional okay. Court. Now, I mean, many suggest, in fact, Felix, a uh, listener from Midrand saying the same thing, the IEC is just entering the political space by taking this matter to the Concord. Do, do you not see the same, that they are entering the political spaces and they need no, to stay not, out? Not, not, no, not, not at all. Not at all. Look, uh, we, are, uh, we do find ourselves in the political space simply owing to the fact that you're dealing with a prominent politician, owing to the fact that, you, that, that you're dealing with prominent political parties and so on. But that is what is happening if you deal with elections. But you're dealing here with a specific technical aspect of an election, which has to be administered by the, uh, by the IEC. Uh, that does not mean that they actually involve themselves in a strict political question. They're involving themselves in an administrative question. And the question they're, in fact, asking is a pure administrative question, the administrative question relating to the question, how do we have to interpret this particular provision of the Constitution, because our interpretation, that's now this, of the literal meaning is clearly an interpretation which most people will agree is an interpretation that excludes Mr. Mr. Zuba from standing. Okay, that's... That's where we can leave it, Professor Chris Milan. Thank you for your time. Um, Professor Milan is a constitutional jurist from Pretoria. And before that, of course, we had Teddy Tselani uh, as per the conversation with Bongi Rezwani. We don't leave that situation alone. We'll talk to Kanita Hunter about that in the next hour, including we'll also chat to the team from Outer about the e-tolls in Gauteng not existing any longer. When you vote on the 29th of May 2024, you will receive three ballot papers. The blue national ballot is for political parties contesting seats in the National Assembly. The orange regional ballot is for political parties and independent candidates who will represent your area in the National Assembly. The pink ballot is for political parties and independent candidates to represent you in your provincial legislature. Vote where you are registered. Visit elections.org.za for more information. It's your democracy. Own it. 
University of Johannesburg and University of the Western Cape have a mammoth task to illustrate what a pitch distinction looks like. This is the Hollywood Bet Super League. Witness the Varsity Derby, UJ Ladies FC versus UWC Ladies FC. The Sunday 14 April at 3 p.m. Live on SABC Sport on DTT Channel 4. Also available on SABC Plus and SABCSport.com. Hashtag we love it here. Proudly brought to you by SABC Sport. Right, it's just gone four o'clock, which means it's time for the news with Eva Chipa. Thanks, Asha. Top stories for this hour. MK Party raises concerns over Zonda's participation in the IEC hearing and Etegwini creates plans to deal with the city's water problems. Good afternoon, Amiva Chiba. MK Party spokesperson Hlamulon Lela says Chief Justice Raymond Zondo will be conflicted should he participate in hearing the IEC's appeal against an electoral court judgment regarding MK leader Jacob Zuma. The IEC has filed an urgent appeal to the Constitutional Court challenging the electoral court for overturning its decision to bar Zuma from standing in the May elections. Lela says the Zondo says for Zondo the conflict of interest arises from his refusal to recuse himself as the head of the state capture inquiry, which ultimately led to Zuma's refusal to appear before the commission, leading to a 15-month contempt of court sentence for the former president. This is the same constitution that presided and uh, over the matter of uh, sentencing President Zuma in the first place. So Judge Zondo in himself finds himself conflicted. There's no doubt about that. He's conflicted in this matter. Um, and I see now, uh, by virtue of them bringing this case, uh, you know, further makes this whole process a constitutional crisis. Deputy President Paul Mashatile has expressed his satisfaction with the Eteguini Metro's plan to deal with the city's extensive water and sewage problems. The Dover Metro is Mashatile's first stop after being appointed as head of a task team on water challenges in the country. He has visited the Northern Water Treatment Plant, where a 500 million rand two-year project is underway to repair 2022 flood damage and to upgrade the plant. The flooding that took place really affected this, this city quite a lot. But there's a turnaround now, and I'm satisfied with the report I've received about the plan. So work is happening, and we want to assure uh, the people of uh, Teguini that uh, they shouldn't have uh, sleepless nights, that they were going to run out of water. Meanwhile, Eteguini Mayor Ngoli Sikaunda says only 10% of the metro's 500,000 households are still affected by water outages. He says the northern pipeline should be finished by mid-May to alleviate the prolonged water outages in areas like Phoenix, Ferulam and Untogati. We are no longer making promises, but we are making commitments because these are the things where companies have been appointed, they are on the ground uh, to address these matters. And we, we, we plead with our communities to be patient with us. We understand that water uh, is such a basic need that uh, they need it now as of yesterday. So it's important that we work together. In other news, Police Minister Becky Kele is hosting an imbizo at the Marikan Informal Settlement in Fundabale Park. This is one of Kele's ongoing imbizos to engage the community members in areas riddled by high crime rates. Tomorrow, the Police Minister will visit Soweto in Johannesburg to also speak to the community about crime and how they can work together to curb it. Kele is accompanied by the National Police Commissioner, Fanny Masemola, and Gauteng Community Safety MEC, Faith Mazibu. The National Union of Metal Workers says Sibanya's latest retrenchment announcement comes as a shock considering the improved gold price in international markets. The NUM says it's ready to engage the company through a CCMA facilitated process to minimize job losses and further calls for Sibanya Stillwater's top management, including CEO Neil Fruman, to resign. The union's national spokesperson, Nivuhani Mamburu, elaborates. This decision that has been taken by Sivani will plunge a number of uh, mine workers into abject poverty. Current management and the CEO are unable to, to manage uh, this company. And uh, this is causing serious instability in the cost sector. The 
and it's totally unacceptable. It is a capitalist barbarism. And lastly, a top Chinese official is visiting North Korea for the first time in five years. The head of China's parliament, Zhao Liji, has been holding talks with his North Korean counterpart. The BBC's Jean McKenzie has the details. The last high-level meeting between the two countries was five years ago, when Kim Jong-un met Xi Jinping after his negotiations with Donald Trump broke down. Ever since, Washington and Pyongyang have been locked in a standoff over the North's nuclear weapons programme. Kim Jong-un has instead sought to bolster his ties with both China and Russia. At their meeting, the two officials agreed to cooperate on politics, the economy and culture, according to the North. China has long been accused of providing assistance to North Korea, violating international sanctions. Recapping the top story for this hour, the MK party says Chief Justice Raymond Zondo will be conflicted should he participate in hearing the IEC's appeal against an electoral court judgment regarding MK leader Jacob Zuma. I'll be back at the bottom of the hour for SFM News. I'm Eva Chipa. And coming up in your sports this hour, it's a bit downplay Springbok captaincy speculation and Osaka helps Japan take control in the BJK Cup tie. More details at 4.30. SAFM, guiding you through the rush hour traffic. It's a busy Friday, driving slowly into the weekend, leaving Joburg on your way to Pretoria. There are two crash scenes in Midrand, one just after Allendale. That's a queue that's already backed up through Baclou to Woodmead. And then shortly thereafter, you're back in the traffic queuing through to a crash scene at Samran. So uh, two pretty heavy queues backlogging there. If you're airport bound, coming out of Pretoria, roadworks still with us today on the R21 at Clayville. And there's some roadworks going north away from the airport before you get to the Benoni exit. And that's quite slow getting up from sort of Atlas Road territory. Also a crash on the R21 going south near Griffith Road. So heading towards uh, Boxburg or heading towards the N12 highway uh, from the airport. There is some backlogging going on there. A crash coming out of Durban towards uh, New Germany and Claremont on the M19. It's just before the Dunkeld Road. It's quite a heavy backlog from Reservoir Hillside. And a truck fire just around the uh, top of uh, Town Hill. So watch for some slowing traffic there. A breakdown after Market Road. If you're leaving Peter Maritzburg, there's some delays as you line up towards uh, Ashburton side. That is Durban bound. And Cape Town today. Bit of traffic on the N2 outbound from halfway out to Nelson Mandela Boulevard out to around uh, Boonga Avenue and the M5 slow both ways through the Maitland area. Rob Byrne, SAFM Traffic. Nali bitso la ka ke bonolo mo agi di bantsu embark Miss B, morara Miss Team, Ashu D, the Bonny P Bon Bon, and we will be now playing Keno on Mondays at half past four. The day has changed, but the time slot hasn't. So if you're interested in news that's happening with us kids and our peers around the world, don't forget to tune in. See you there. Sundowns ladies believe they belong at the top and they want the vital three points. But Linda Lani ladies are on a mission to shock Banyana Bas style. This is the Hollywood Bet Super League. Witness the queens of the beautiful game. Mami Lodi Sundowns ladies FC versus Linda Lani ladies FC. The Sunday 14 April at 11 a.m. Live on SABC Sport on DTT Channel 4. Also available on SABC Plus and SABC Sport.com. Hashtag we love it here. Proudly brought to you by SABC Sport. Sport. Eletabo Kanyako, Irski Times, a journalist, South Africa now missing out back to back Olympic qualification. How huge a blow is this for South African football, given the fact that now we will not be able to be at the um, Olympics once again? I think, well, it is, uh, naturally, it is a, a, a big blow with Brian, like in the sense that one, this time around, we were trying to qualify now as African champions that tag on its own, and also having seen in recent years Banyana Banyana's growth, winning the outcome, obviously what they did at the World Cup also, you know, a historic moment for any South African team for that matter. So we want to see a little bit of continuity in terms of, you know, on, on the global stage, in tennis quick, you know, still very much motivated. Top Sport on SAFM. <laughs> The National Pulse with Ashraf Garda on SAFM. You're listening to the National Pulse, weekdays 3 to 6 p.m. to 6 p.m. I always do wonder what's that National Pulse rate like anyway. And then you get a message from Brian uh, Mabaye saying politicians mustn't be allowed in mosques 
churches or any religious places as they regard themselves as godly images and they pollute people of faith with their divisions and in race also they rob the poor of their potential ability of empowerment. Interesting one. Well, I'll tell you what, Brian, here's, here's the question. Must they not be allowed at all? Or must they not allow to be speaking on a platform? I think they're really two separate issues, okay? And, and I think there's a case for, for suggesting that politicians understanding they're given a platform at religious um, functions, they certainly will push a policy line, if not a party line. Um, they will. But should they not be allowed at all? Of course, if they want to pray and get and, and, and become better people, well, how would you not allow them to do that? I think there's two different parts. But do you have any thoughts on, on you know, politicians in religious spaces and using those religious spaces for, for political gain? Uh, you tell me. You can call or WhatsApp all the time, you know, that, or tweet out. And if you're tweeting out, just tag us on the SFM radio on the X platform and tag me, Ashraf Ghanda. Do not forget the National Pulse is the hashtag you need to be using. So further comment as well on the IEC rulings, uh, and we get another opinion on that from Kanita Hunter later on, but then stop you giving your opinion even now. And uh, then on the on the broader issue that I mentioned, that South Africa champions of, uh, of multi-religious expression, and I believe that, okay, uh, do you believe that? You have an opinion on that. You tell me. Right. We'll talk about um, issues in the Northwest. Huge issues there. And by the way, after five being a Friday, my fireside chat is with a musician, Ringo. Now, what are we going to be talking about? There's so many things he could talk about, but what will we really talk about for 45 minutes or so from five to six? Uh, well, you have to listen out for that fireside chat with Ringo. But there's another issue that's sort of brewing away that uh, maybe certainly got your pulse racing or boiling, whichever way you, you take it. The good news is he tolls in, in Gauteng are over. So I think, well, certainly they can't bill you any longer. But the bad news, I understand, there could be an issue about you were built before. What else? The third issue is who takes the credit for all of this. Now, you may know that I had a chat with the premier of uh, Gauteng, Panyaza Le Sufi, a few days ago. In fact, a couple of days ago. And uh, I asked him many things. But, but towards the end, we, we focused on this. You know, again, victory has been claimed, whether it's Gauteng province, whether it's others. And, and many others, you know, coming back and said, but acknowledge the role of, of Aucha in this, uh, in terms of being effectively the first respondent or, 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 or form of activism against ETOLs. What would you tell us about that? That is why I got everyone that was involved, from Aucha, church formation, bikers, uh, political parties, everyone that was involved must be acknowledged. And we should be grateful that uh, we stood together uh, on this particular okay. matter. Finally, uh, Premier, what's the big yeah. lesson to learn from this? I mean, I think there are so many, there's always leadership lessons to learn. What's the big lesson for you to learn from this? Let me say there is something that, regardless of this, that you must not throw it out of the window. They use a pay principle. If you use something, you must pay for it. Uh, so one lesson that we need to uh, to really learn out of this is that uh, that user pay principle must not only be defended but must be communicated appropriately uh, because we really believe that uh, the communication was not clear and what we're expecting out of people of Houting was also not clear and that if you introduce something of this nature, you don't have to introduce it in one region only. If you have to introduce it, put up a plan. But we are starting with Gauteng, we'll go mm. to Free State, we'll go to Cape Town. Because if you target one area, people feel that they're isolated when they're paying taxes and paying all Absolutely. that. Absolutely. But, but therefore, there isn't, and, 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 and therefore here's the last thing. Isn't the lesson, you know, where it's an example of, of government being disconnected from its constituency uh, in this case here? Yeah. Indeed, indeed. Uh, as I said, to me, it's a collective decision making, but most importantly, outlining the roadmap so that everyone knows it starts here, it ends here. But if you don't communicate that clearly, it creates the confusion that it has created for all of us. But said, as I said, come tomorrow, this part of uh, of our lives is going to be history. Okay, that's the that's the thoughts of uh, Premier Panyaz Al Sufi in the conversation with me a few days ago. Let's get further thoughts on clearly developing story, if not so much about Ito's ending, but the implications of the end and, and who takes the credit for turning this entire mess, really, because that's what it was and is, around. Advocate uh, Stephanie Fick is with me, Executive Director of the Accountability Division at Outer. Uh, Stephanie, I appreciate your time. Thanks for joining us. Good afternoon. I have only a pleasure. Thank only you. So, so let's break this down in terms of some th some of the things first which the Premier said, right? Um, he, he first spoke about the user pay principle. You know, if you use something, you pay for it. So now ETOLs have ended. There's still some question marks about users needing to pay. 
Your, your thoughts on that? The use of that principle might be in principle not a bad idea, but aren't we all paying, using and paying? So with regards to the, uh, the use of pay principle in terms of ETOS, where else in the country have they implemented this? So it's only helping. Helping is considered to be the economic hub of South Africa. I mean, it contributes to South Africa's GDP, um, I think it's 33%, more than Cape Town and KwaZulu-Natal combined. And then we must understand, we, you know, everybody in this country, everybody, if you, everybody in this country is a taxpayer, and that part of what you pay um, come, goes to the fiscus, and then the fiscus is supposed to um, look after the interests of South Africa. So there might be reasons where user pay is applicable, but in halting, where they try to funnel, try to get 34% of their income, from 1% of their road services. The GFIP upgrade was 200 kilometers. Funnel is in charge of 24,000 kilometers. Where else do they use the user pay principle? So it is, uh, except for the, 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 the boom down tolls, the long distance tolls. And, mm-hmm. and it's not as if they get, they get funding from the fiscus for the upgrades of their roads. So I, I do think it is, one needs to unpack that a little bit more than just to say, if you use it, you must pay it. Of course, mm. we all pay. Okay. <laughs> and, and on the issue of, the, there's, there's vagueness about this, right? So those that have been built in the past, uh, I know the Premier in, in conversation with me said that they need to, you know, the Gauteng has to pay something, gov- national government has to pay in terms of the organization that put this whole thing up in the first place. That means the debt must still be paid. But do the consumers, in this case the drivers in the city of, uh, in, in the cities that make up Gauteng, do they still need to pay for things they've been built for before? Or is that history? I mean, I, I, I I don't think so. I think, um, and, and specifically for the upgrade and, 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 and the maintenance, yes, there should be maintenance. And some will look after the, you know, the national roads pretty well. It's the provincial and um, local government roads that's a problem. Mm-hmm. And as the minister has said, um, you know, they only have 50 billion. Is that a, a question of user pay or is it a question that we do have enough money coming into the fiscus is how we spend it? So maybe we should go look and not put the blame before, you know, mm-hmm. helping and, and the motors that should pay. It is about, I think, that trust deficit with government, that government is not spending our money where it should be spent. Okay, but let's try to make this very clear. In terms of how Cheng only and the e-tolls that have now ended, if you've been billed already for, for using the e-tolls in the last few years, uh, do you still need to pay for, for if you get sent an invoice or a bill for that or, or, or not? Um, no, you will. Uh, the billing would have stopped at midnight, to, um, you know, today. Right. You know, so today we are, are e-tolls free. Right. Um, so, you know, people with e-tax, there's, there's probably, it, it takes a while for the, the money to get deducted on there. So there might be, I think the minister said around seven days. It didn't sound like Sunwall was very sure how long the, the, the clearing of the account takes. But from now on, no one has to pay. If we are talking about the historic debt, yes. it is a question of if you were brave enough to say, I'm not paying for this because it's a corrupt scheme, cost too much, unnecessary why would you pay now? Well, okay. What has changed? <laughs> Let's you know, move on. I think yeah. point point taken, right? If if, yeah. if if this if citizens did that in the first case, why would they why would they turn around now yes. to want to pay for something and make it a viable proposition in the first place, right? Okay, let's talk about the other thing. Um, I and there's been a big debate, a big debate about about government or in this case the Gauteng province celebrating the end of uh, of e-tolls. I mean, do, do you find that the celebration out of order because it shouldn't be a celebration. In fact, they succumbed to something that was actually clearly not working. <laughs> I you know. I, in, if you read, my, 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 my gut answer tells me that this is probably part of a bit of electioneering. Um, you can go and check. You know, every time that there was some type of good news about ETOL was just before elections. I really feel strongly about it that government actually um, should um, apologize 
to, to everybody, but specifically helping motorists for this ill-conceived scheme. You know what? It really cost us double for, to upgrade that road because Sunhol was unable to curb the corruption and curb the, mm. the, you know, the, the uh, construction collusion and all of that. They actually owe us uh, a, a, an apology. Okay. But will we ever get it? No. So I really think that instead of saying to, to, to say, yes, Maybe this wasn't handled appropriately, so we listened, and now we're putting it off because it is not a system that is working. They were forced to put it off mm. with a compliance rate of 11 to 10 percent. I mean, honestly, they didn't do anything. Mm-hmm. They were forced. To do this. Well, look, Ponyaza Lusufi, the minister, the premier in this case, uh, didn't apologize. So I didn't ask him to apologize, but he did concede <laughs> this part. He didn't concede mm. this. When I spoke about, uh, he agreed that this reflects a government disconnection from its constituency. And he said, yes, that's true. Yes. Yes. Um, you know, one, I want to use one example. I think it is in London where they started um, tolling the people using cars because what they wanted to do is move away from cars in the mid-city and people to use trains. So they made sure that trains were accessible to people. And you know what? The people bought into that idea. So there was consultation. People understood that there was a trust relationship. So people left their cars. They traveled with trains. What were they trying to accomplish with 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 um, the user pay principle, specifically in in, in you know 200 kilometres of of, of Sunwell's roads? And it is that you know that trusted as if they had a really what what I think came across is we made a decision, we wanted this, and we honestly did not care what you thought about it. Mm. So instead of listening, instead of right at the beginning with Wayne and the team, you know, and, and, and other civil activist organizations trying to um, converse with government, trying to give them other solutions, and they just refuse to listen. And I think that is the lesson that they should learn. So you were quite right by pointing that out. Well, I mean, yes. Yeah, so so you, you conceded about disconnection. Then he conceded at the end that outer and church groups and other political parties uh, and other activists played a huge role, including, he said, himself. He said he also opposed the tolling, and I think he had, he did do that, right? Uh, do, do you think enough credit has been given to civil society, including outer for, for their role? Well, you know what? Every time people ask me this, of course, you sit with a team at an organization like Alpha that is extremely passionate. It started with ETOS, passionate about looking after, um, you know, the, the rights of South Africans, fighting against, later on against corruption, etc. So w- would we like to have, um, you know, be patted on the back? No, not really. I don't think activists are doing that for, for, for that. What I would like to see is that there is some type of congratulations for the, for the motorists, for ordinary citizens that stood up and mm-hmm. said, you know what, I'm going to be brave enough being part of civil disobedience for the right reasons and that there should be some kind of acknowledgement for the fact that, you know what, power to the people. Mm. And, um, and, 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 and it's because of brave individuals that we always point have. point made and therefore just to answer this in 30 seconds right then we wrap up uh, what is the big take out in terms of the overall impact of civil society and you've sort of touched on it already you know going forward it's incredible incredible i think civil society needs to understand that they have the power i think there was a, a stage in our history where because of the winnings and because of democracy i think we sort of sat back and said maybe we don't have to fight anymore and we took off um, our eyes off the ball. Never, never again should we do it. It is extreme. We played an enormous part in state capture and all of that. And we can never, ever, ever forget the power that civil society has. We have the power, even when there's no power, like load shedding. Uh, thanks for that uh, <laughs> conversation, advocate uh, Stephanie Fick, executive director of the accountability division at uh, Outer. Talking about who has the power. Well, who has the power in the Northwest? Two kitchens, two home cooks, two chefs, a mystery bag of ingredients, 20 minutes, and one Musha and Dicky. Put them all together and you have created Ready Steady Cook South Africa. Tune in weekdays to see two new faces battle it out in the kitchen with the help of some of South Africa's most iconic chefs with Musha bringing his wit and charisma to the Ready Steady Cook kitchen. Channel your inner five-star chef on Ready Steady Cook South Africa. Starts Monday the 18th of March at 7 p.m. Only on... When you vote on the 29th of May 2024, you'll receive three ballot papers. 
The blue national ballot is for political parties contesting seats in the National Assembly. The orange regional ballot is for political parties and independent candidates who will represent your area in the National Assembly. The pink ballot is for political parties and independent candidates to represent you in your provincial legislature. Vote where you are registered. Visit elections.org.za for more information. It's your democracy. Own it. The boys of Steve Parker resist to leave the pitch without a ticket to the semis. But there's a big problem. Kevin Hunt's boys say the last dance of happiness belongs to them. This is the Netbank Cup quarterfinal battle. Stellies versus Matatanz Apitori on Saturday, 13 April at 2.30 p.m. Live on SABC1 and SABC radio stations. Also available on SABC Plus and SABCSport.com. Hashtag, we love it here. Proudly brought to you by SABC Sport. Across South Africa, online and on radio. SAFM, let's talk. The best way to be part of the National Pulse is to, is to call in or to WhatsApp voice note us. And you can do both right away. Uh, 06, 086 000 2032. Uh, that is to call in and to WhatsApp 0614 104 There are the further thoughts on... Um, the electoral delay. Well, why is the electoral court delaying in giving a full judgment? Is it not behaving suspiciously? Is it not also playing politics? IEC only reads needs the clarity of that constitutional provision, which only the constitutional court can provide. Well, how, when you say delay, like when did you, did you want to answer? Like in one in one hour? I'm just thinking. Takes longer than that. Takes a few days at least, uh, and they will in terms of the constitutional court, right? There's a there's a couple of more. In fact, um, let's get let's get some voice notes, right? Good evening, Ashraf and SAFM listeners. What's happening with the interpretation of law in this country? Aren't our lawyers being trained how to interpret the law? seems like universities have serious work to do in that regard. Thanks. This is Lionel from Woodbank. Lionel from Woodbank saying that's uh, okay. Well, that's a challenge, in fact, in terms of interpreting things. There's further someone saying politicians will stop going to church after the elections. Uh, and another one, Zuma, just cautioning his people. Let's pick up another voice note. Ashraf Kharushima Busela speaking. After the election... Next year, you must watch the space, especially in April on Good Friday and uh, Christmas. You won't see politicians going to churches like they do today. Thank you very much. Okay, I need to diarize that. Christmas and Easter after the election. No politicians present. Liz Weir from KZN High. Hi, good afternoon. Hi. Good afternoon. Welcome to the National Pulse. Thank you. I just wanted to comment on the statement that was made by uh, Terry Tsilane not long ago. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I think it's two points. <clears throat> the first point is with regards to the involvement of IEC in this objection. I think the public needs to be informed correctly that, in fact, the doctor launched an objection after the objection was launched, the IEC administratively made a decision. So it is the decision of IEC that was taken to court. Therefore, it was a prerogative of IEC to go and defend its decision as an institution. Therefore, it should not be <coughs> interpreted as if IEC ought not to have uh, been involved, but only the objector should have been involved. In this case, it's not about an objection. It's about a decision that was made by IEC after the objection was made. Then the second point <clears throat> pertains to uh, the allegation or the statement saying that IEC was ill-advised to take mm. the matter to the Corn Court for, for further elucidation by the Constitutional Court. Yeah. I think that is also very much flawed because this is a matter of public interest. It's not about only the current uh, elections in 2024 or the future elections. It is very much important. The step that IEC has taken is very much important in a sense that the public needs to be informed 
what is the correct interpretation of Section 47 1E, and also whether or not can we say is this a proper precedent that needs to be followed? That needs to be done now before even the election comes by. So that is what I wanted to put up. All right. Well, I think you've raised important issues, and, and I concur with you by and large that, you know, if they don't take it to the... So the one is like they're meddling, just let them run the election. But they need to, to follow the logical course and take it to the Constitutional Court, and let's see exactly what comes out of it. We'll know pretty soon. Then we'll know, then we can move on. So thanks for that call. We should be chatting about the who owns the power in uh, in Northwest, right? We'll see if we can do that later on. We've been just battling with a bad connection. But it doesn't mean news, it does not mean the news issues do not develop. They do develop. Let's get now it's three it's four thirty. In fact, here's the news headlines with Eva. Top stories for this hour. Mineral Resources and Energy Minister Gwede Mandaje has emphasized the importance of mining companies in plowing back to their labor sending communities. Mandaje officially opened a new clinic to the community of Pindweni in the Eastern Cape. In other news, MK Party spokesperson Nklamulon Lela says Chief Justice Raymond Zondo will be conflicted should he participate in hearing the IEC's appeal against an electoral court judgment regarding MK leader Jacob Zuma. The IEC has filed an urgent appeal in the the Constitutional Court, challenging the Electoral Court for overturning its decision to bar Zuma from standing in the May elections. And lastly, Minister of International Relations and Cooperation, Aledi Pando, says South Africans, South Africa rather, will offer support to any country experiencing oppression. I'll be back at five with more on these and other stories. For SFM News, I'm Eva Chipa. SAFM, guiding you through the rush hour traffic. To South of Oxburg on the 554, this is Fun Dake Road. There's been a cash in transit heist. It's at the junction with Heidelberg Road. And there are delays on all approaches there. If you move sort of between Alberton and, and um, Boxburg or Alberton and uh, Brackfan, expect some delays on that busy route. It's all sort of being locked down as we speak. Uh, two crash scenes on the M1 going north this afternoon through Midrand, one at Allendale, another up by Samrat. It's a joined up queue all the way through from about Grayston Drive on the Mike One right through to the uh, second crash scene there at the uh, Samrat. Rand exit. Durban's M19 still struggling in traffic out towards Dunkeld Road. So coming from uh, Reservoir Hills on your way to New Germany, Claremont and Pine Town, that uh, collision scene uh, backlogging traffic uh, traffic quite heavily today. And Cape Town, the M5, the uh, Black River Parkway slow both ways north and southbound, jamming between the N2 highway and the N1 Cuba. Get a change. And still no lights on the N7 at Milton Road. So coming south through Goodwood towards Fort Trekker Road, again backlogging. Rob Byrne, SAFM Traffic. This is SAFM Sports with Duming Kabele. So naturally, we're going to start at the very top with Sundowns. Absolutely. It's uh, the <laughs> Netbank Cup action that is happening today. They caught a final clash against Amatax. And uh, Sundowns uh, coach Rulani Mugwena has insisted that his charges do have an aggressive side to them when necessary. The Sundowns mentor was responding to a question on whether the Brazilians can uh, play dirty to uh, get the job done in their remaining fixtures in uh, the DSTV Premiership. And Mugwena has explained why every team has to have that approach in their arsenal. I take it as a compliment. I think it's something that uh, uh, I think uh, if you look at all the most successful teams globally, uh, they've always had this side to them. You go to a Manchester United with your Roy Keynes. Uh, the Liverpool sides have always had some of these characters with your Jamie Carragher's and uh, Manchester United. With uh, I've spoken about Man United also with your, your Neville's. Then still staying with football, Supersport United uh, coach Gavin Hans has admitted that they failed in recent games to uh, climb up the league table. But he believes that Matsatsansa can still achieve a CAF Champions League spot and win a trophy this season. The 20 side are currently in sixth place and on uh, the DSTV Premiership blog with eight matches to go. And uh, they are away to Stellenbosch FC in uh, the Netbank Cup quarterfinals at the Danny Craven Stadium tomorrow afternoon. I think if you, if you look at the league, I think... Between sort of second and sixth or seventh, we've got our own little league going there, you know. Um, and we certainly were top of that league five games ago. So we've, we've, we've got behind the eight ball a little bit there, but I still we've got time to catch up there, I think. I do think if you look at the fixtures that's coming up. 
In rugby, Springboks lock Eben Elizabeth has uh, downplayed any speculations over whether he could be uh, Sia Kulisi's uh, successor. And despite having led the box in the past, Elizabeth deflected questions about becoming the permanent leader of the world champions after new coach Rossi Erasmus suggested that Kulisi would be replaced over his move to Racing 92 in France. Yeah, I don't want to speculate too much. I'm, I'm obviously I'm the captain here of the box. Uh, we all know Sia. I mean, Sia is, will always be, if he's match fit, he'll always be in the team. And uh, yeah, he, he might might lead us. Someone else might, might lead us. Uh, we know we just want to win uh, test matches. We we have all leadership group and, and we all work together. And the captain at the end of the day, he runs out in front. Uh, but we. We will always work together and whoever the responsibility lies on, we, we've got backing off of a couple of senior players and um, yeah, if, if that responsibility comes towards me, great. If it doesn't, also great because we know um, we want to go into this year and be successful in our test matches and then that's for us the main thing and, and we're not worrying about which individual gets what as long as we can perform well as a team. Just by the way, I, I, saw... I saw a picture of... Uh... Yeah, man, that's a bath with a the South African DJ whose name escapes me just for the moment. Okay, and he's going to kick me because okay. he knows I know him well. But that's not the issue. He's like, Yeben is tall, man. He is. Oh my goodness. <laughs> he no, is. You could you could be a boxer yeah. with that reach. <laughs> so I think he is, and uh, he's hoping to help the Sharks this weekend no. to do well um, in uh, the Champions Cup. But moving on to Commonwealth Game news, Glasgow could uh, step in to host a scaled back Commonwealth Games in 2026 as uh, organisers are still struggling to find a willing host for the multi-sport event. The Commonwealth Games Federation has been scrambling to find new hosts after the Australian state of Victoria withdrew last year because of soaring costs. Singapore and Malaysia have uh, ruled out stepping in to the void. This is despite the offer of 2.3 billion rand from the CGF to cover the costs. However, the 2026 games would have to be reduced to a core program of 10 to 13 sports from the 20 held in Birmingham in 2020. Anything's off with tennis? Naomi Osaka helped Japan take control of the Billie Jean King Cup qualifier against Kazakhstan today. The former world number one um, beat Yulia Putinteva 6-4, 2 rather, and 7-6 in Tokyo to give Japan a commanding lead. Osaka, who uh, returned to tennis late last year after giving birth, said that she was super nervous about uh, playing in Japan for the first time since appearing at the Pan Pacific Open in uh, September 2022. Uh, Well, she soon found her rhythm, hitting 15 aces and no double faults. It is a wrap from my side. With that said, I'll have more in the next hour for SAFM Sport. I'm Dumin Kapele. Here, there, and everywhere. SAFM 104.6 FM in Kimberley. Economic news on SAFM. Facts and figures you can count on. In fact, that uh, picture with uh, Yemen Atzebeth was with uh, Alex J. Check it out on Alex's Instagram account. You'll see how tall Yemen is. Oh, it's, it's crazy. Okay, let's talk about uh, the, the length of, of the money markets. Uh, an Amani uh, market update with uh, Paswani Impatlele, Senior Portfolio Manager at uh, Makwe Fund Managers. Good afternoon, uh, Paswani. Thanks for joining us. Right, go ahead. Local and global issues. Afternoon, uh, Shim Jan, to all your listeners. Uh, we're looking at a Friday end of the week where the market is continuing to price for higher for a longer environment. Investors are doing the same with more aggression today as they saw more evidence of inflation concerns through the likes of the U.S. import prices increasing on a monthly basis again, forming a trend. And Ashim, just not only worrying about inflation, investors are also being smart about it and trying to get paid through the commodities such as copper, silver, gold that are higher by almost 2% across the board. And that going higher, some of the commodities are also benefiting from the statuses from geopolitical tensions where we're, we're, there's been expectations around Iran making attacks throughout the weekend. With those concerns at hand, this means monetary policy implications are potentially keeping rates elevators. And this is the likes of dollar getting a bet as investors also seek for a risk-free paying back. But with uh, but on the, on the growth side, we see long-term yield, uh, yields are breaking down, indicating growth concerns 
citizens, especially with the higher for long environment, crippling the such the likes of mainstream businesses. And still on the growth concerns, we still we found more evidence pointing to concerns, especially with the likes of exports from China that were down 7.5% year on year, worse than expected, dashing hopes of some global demand coming back on to support China. And uh, with, uh, while the U.S. consumer sentiment also fell at the back of worries of inflation and uncertainty around elections. But uh, with those challenges and that said, we're looking at uh, an overall picture where we're seeing inflation concerns are greater than growth. And that's where we're seeing a little bit of red screens on our market screens. We see the U.S. market is opened lower with the Nasdaq, S&P and the Dow over down by a percent. In the Europe, we're seeing a mixed picture. FTSE was up a percent. DAX and CAC were flat. JC also flat with a bit, a bit of positivity, supported heavily by the resource sector, picking up 6%, while finances were down 2.7, industrials were down 1.5. Going back to those commodity indices, we're looking at gold that hit up 1.9% right now, sitting at $2,419 an ounce. Platinum up 2% at $1,015 an ounce. Oil 1.8% at $91.80 a barrel. But those wings uh, for the rand right now, see some weakness flooding through. You'll see the rand was weaker by the, against the dollar by over a percent, sitting at 1893, rand against the euro 2013, rand against the pound 2355. Right. And anything else you need to add to that? No. Nah. No, that's it for the Let's day. Let's hope okay. that our geopolitical weekends uh, do not, uh, nothing happens. Absolutely. From a geopolitical sense. Perfect. Great. We'll chat again on, on Monday. Thank you. The National Pulse with Ashraf Garda. Weekdays, 3 to 6 p.m. Join Smile Foundation for a movie night under the stars featuring Sing 2 on Saturday, 20th of April at Old Ed Sports Grounds. To book, visit smilefoundationsa.org. This is an SABC-supported initiative. University of Johannesburg and University of the Western Cape have a mammoth task to illustrate what a pitch distinction looks like. This is the Hollywood Bet Super League. Witness the Varsity Derby, UJ Ladies FC versus UWC Ladies FC. The Sunday 14 April at 3 p.m. Live on SABC Sport on DTT Channel 4. Also available on SABC Plus and SABCSport.com. Hashtag we love it here. Proudly brought to you by SABC Sport. SAFM Sunrise with Stephen Grutis. Is it true that some of your members are also not paying their rates to the council? There are some members that do not pay their rates. I myself are withholding currently my rates because I have declared a legal dispute which I am allowed to do by the municipality's financial act. There are no services for seven years. No refuse has ever been removed in my street, my house. My business, they don't fix our uh, lights in our town, they don't cut the grass uh, on the pavements, they don't keep the parks up. There is no services, non-existent. I cannot pay them money that they're going to squander on something else. Willem Kunik, thank you. Chair of the Harry Smith, Interbazwe and Tiami Residents Association. SAFM Sunrise with Stephen Grotes, 6 to 9 a.m. X at SFM Radio and at Ashraf Garda. So you know that uh, being a Friday, we we have a fireside chat. So I hang out with someone and we um, we have good fun. But we also raise some really really important issues. And last week we raised the issue of um, what is it? Pretty privilege, which really got the whole country thinking about things and got their pulses racing. Okay. So today we've got uh, well. Uh, as part of the fireside chat, my guest is Ringo. Ringo is in Ringo Madlingozi, who's a mu- musician, you know that. So, first of all, let me say hi to you. You're already in, in studio early. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, you're laughing already. I don't know why. You, we're not going to talk about music. We asked you. No, no, no. We no. asked you to raise one issue mm-hmm. that you want to run with after all five right. o'clock. What are you going to raise? Having conversation with the dead. <laughs> I said, "What do you? What are you going to raise?" And you've taken that word literally for me. Right? What's your? What's your take? What's your? What's your issue? Conversations about the dead or with the dead? About people who are, uh, you know, burying people, you yeah. know, at the at the gravesite, uh, you know, uh, the dramas that are happening and, and everything else about it. 
you know. Do uh, people have drama at the, at the grave, sir? Lot. I, like I sound so naive, like dumb. I'm even asking the <laughs> question. <laughs> yeah. They have drama. Okay. Oh, no, no, sure they do. <laughs> All right. We're going to... We're going to get people in fact you as as a part of the audience here you tell me what do you what do you make of people being you know obviously somebody has died and there's huge sympathy but what do you make of the drama that takes place around the graveside um uh, because of, of deep emotions and then sometimes sometimes there's a sense of exhibition um around the drama what what do you make of all of that uh, are you one of those people Right, uh, you tell me. So we'll, we'll. In fact, you can send WhatsApps now, WhatsApp voice notes now, and we we'll play them very, very early on. Before I get there, you have a view to me. Yeah, I think there are people that actually are overly dramatic when um, we get to the gravesite, to be specific, because. Um, and sometimes I tend to ask myself, is it because they're overtaken by emotion? Because some of them would even want to throw themselves inside the grave. <laughs> no, like it's yes. serious. I mean, I know. That's you're what right. they do. Yes, and yes, then yes, yes. there's mm. some of the ladies that mm. literally scream. Yep. And they wail, but like they're very loud and then they faint. And but but is, pa- is that part of a culture or the culture or is that just a person losing it i honestly don't know that's why i'm saying it's <laughs> actually maybe it is part of uh, a new culture <laughs> part, part of a new culture <laughs> okay well but it's very old yeah because they've been yeah, doing yeah, it for a while for a very long time but it's so funny that actually just coming to think about it in families there's that one lady mm-hmm. there's just, always no, uh, that one auntie yeah, <laughs> and, and you have that person in your family. I do. And you won't mention names, right? Okay, but you know who you are, right? You tell me what uh, what, what do you what do you make about the drama around you know funerals and, and people uh, wailing but wanting to jump into a uh, into the grave and and really going on for themselves beyond just the emotions, like absolutely taking center stage, like they cannot be forgotten. So we're going to talk about that with the Ringo, the musician. Can you imagine talking about death and life? Uh, and people who are larger than life uh, at funerals with Ringo the musician <laughs> looking forward to that as part of our fireside chat thanks for that to me uh, right by the way let's get to some of the callers as well uh, because certainly people have views on many of the things we've raised including the issues of the churches right uh, Lemius uh, Mashile from Bushbuck Ridge go ahead hi uh, hi how are you Arsenal? I'm very good I haven't chatted to you in a long time understandably so yes the last time I spoke to you um, I was the deputy president of Sanko yeah, and being in parliament, and uh, now I'm speaking to you as a general secretary of Sanko. It's Asraf, um, as a leader of communities, we are actually indicating that we can't have a question where the churches make the church to be a no go area for politicians. Because um, when the government of the day has decided that we are having elections and the part of the elections is for for electorate to vote, and therefore they have got the duty to make sure that all corners of society are aware of the election day and what is expected of them to do in those elections. And uh, this Ashraf, it is um, it is supported by Romans 13, verse 1 and 2, uh, which reads as follows: Let every person be subordinate to the higher authorities, for there is no authority except from God, and those that exist have been established by God. Therefore, whoever Resist authority opposes what God has appointed, and those who, oppo- who oppose it will bring judgment upon them. Okay. So, in other ways, is that the government of the day that has proclaimed the election date, then it expects all the electorates to be able to do the right thing on that day, and therefore it must be able to speak to the electorate to know what is expected. Okay, so so you'd be supportive of a church raising an election, uh, and I mean the same with a mosque or a synagogue or a mandir or a temple, but but would you be supportive of of those religious bodies then pushing a certain party line? Well, not necessarily, because people that go to church, then um, they are apolitical in general. But then they must allow all political parties to approach them 
and to indicate to the church goers that um, there is these particular elections and that there, is, there are these options that are available for them on the election day. And the, church, the churches, the authorities in the churches must allow the people to perform their their duty mm-hmm. as an electoral agency. Okay, let's let's leave it that. Thanks for that, uh, Lemius, and, and may your, uh, your your shifts in terms of civil society issues continue, right? But just for my side, I mean, if if a mosque, because I would attend a mosque, if a mosque. Um, leader does not talk about the election, I'm disappointed because that means they are out of touch with the reality of a society that is impacted by who governs us. So I, I would be disappointed. If, however, they, they, they push a specific party line and expect me to to be part of their political party affiliations, then I'm also disappointed. Have you got that right? Disappointed on both accounts. Ignore, I'm disappointed at pushing a certain party line. I'm disappointed uh, too. Further thoughts, you are most welcome, including that issue about uh, the drama, according to Ringo, that takes place around funerals where, where people go literally overboard. I'm not saying it, that's what he's saying, but I certainly want to get your thoughts. And in fact, you can WhatsApp me right away. So we'll start with your WhatsApp voice notes when we get to the ringside uh, fireside chat. In fact, I could say ringside because it's like a boxing fight as well. Maybe that happens at funerals too. I don't know. Uh, remember the voice notes, 0614-104-107. Well, I suppose a ringside fight of sorts is taking place around the IEC, uh, MK, former President Jacob Zuma, and and, and all the goings on around that election of uh, the 29th of May. Now, we've had responses, as you know, earlier this morning. Uh, Terry Tselani gave his thoughts. We've had Chris Milan, Professor Chris Milan, giving his opinions. Let's get another take on, on what is a critically important issue with Kanita Hunter, who is the Assistant Editor for Politics and Opinions at News24. Kanita, I appreciate your time and what first day after Eid. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much for having me, Ashraf. Thank you. Right. Well, what's your... you? In fact, I was reading your, your, your tweets on the X platform and, and you had some, I think, five points specifically that you felt why the IEC are correct in challenging the decision of a few days ago and therefore going the constitutional court route, right? What, what, what are they? Firstly, this decision has uh, a, a huge uh, potential to have um, to set a precedent, and the IEC does not only deal with objections related to Jacob Zuma; it, it deals with objections every day. And the MK Party's main objection, or one of their main objections, when they challenged the decision um, to to bar Zuma or to uphold their objection against uh, him contesting the elections, was that that the IC does not have the power to, uh, quote-unquote, pre-vet candidates, um, and that it's the job of the National Assembly. Um, and, and when it comes to Section 47 of the Constitution, the section that regulates, um, uh, you know, who is uh, eligible to become a member of Parliament, it, it distinctly says that if you have a sentence that's longer than 12 months without an option of paying a fine, then you cannot contest um, the election. Mm-hmm. So, so why this is superbly important is, uh, is the fact that this has precedent long beyond Jacob Zuma. Secondly, I think that uh, the, the allegations made by Advocate Dalim Porfu against the IEC in the electoral court uh, hearings that the IEC was biased. I thought that that extremely mm-hmm. concerning. Mm-hmm. And the third thing that the IEC is saying to the Constitutional Court um, is that there's, there's no, there is no uh, uh, um, sort of mechanism that would, that, would pre, that would vet candidates from the time elections happen until you know, the two weeks later when, when, a, when a candidate um, uh, gets sworn in as a member of parliament. And so this is beyond Jacob Zuma. And more importantly, I think that um, it, you, we have to have absolute certainty in terms of the constitutional court. What's further interesting is that they, they're running against a ticking clock because there's an electoral timetable. And I think that's mm. why the IEC had to quickly go to the Concord despite the fact that the electoral court has yet to furnish reasons for their judgment. Yeah, absolutely. And run through some of the points you made, but let's just go with with one of the last ones you've said, which is this is not about Jacob Zuma. But the reality is most of the detractors and the critics of what you may say say, in fact, it is about Jacob Zuma. This is a clear plan to keep our president out of becoming the president again. 
The reality of it is that the IEC did not object to the candidacy of, of Jacob Zuma. It was the members of the public as per the law and as per the Constitution. And all the IEC said is that we're invoking Section 47 of the Constitution. The Electoral Court has said that that decision was irregular, and now they need to get constitutional, constitutional certainty on it. It doesn't cost anyone anything. They need, we need to have the certainty. If the, if the Constitutional Court says definitively that, um, that, that actually it's not up to the IEC to, to pre-vet candidates and to apply Section 47 of the Constitution, then then we now know, and there is some legal certainty around that particular matter. Um, and so I think that what people don't realize is that while while there is this um, political noise around Jacob Zuma, and obviously this is going to become um, a huge political football for the uh, MK party, mm. I think that if you look closely at the arguments presented to the Apex Court by the Independent Electoral Commission, you will see that um, they are looking far beyond today. Um, and, that, and that's the part uh, you know, that was, was interesting. There's, there is no legal certainty on, on what is the consequence of a remission of sentence, for example. Does a remission of sentence mean that the, the sentence is cancelled or, um, or that you don't have to Serve the sentence, and, and, and that's the point. And that's the point that Dalian Pofu has been arguing, right? Because of that remission hmm. of sentence, in fact, he only served a few months in in, in prison, and therefore did not serve. Section forty-seven yeah. doesn't apply. Yeah. Yes, good. Uh, so you, you, here's the thought in terms of. Um, the the former IEC had Terit Salani's points about suggesting the IEC effectively needs to stay in its lane and worry about a free in fact uh, free and fair election. They should not even wor- they should not take this on appeal. I mean, are, are you surprised at that? Many are. I think that I, I think that's a fair comment, right? Because it it, it comes with a huge risk, especially since the, since the MK party from February has been constantly targeting the uh, uh, um, the IEC and accusing it uh, preemptively of, of, of being biased. Remember, they marched against the IEC. They, they even threatened the IEC um, before this decision was even made. So they kind of knew that this decision was it was was imminent. Um, and so they, there is a fair point in that in that you don't want to be part of the mudslinging. But I think that the that the the arguments made by Advocate Talim Porfu uh, go Go, go hit into the mandate of the IEC, and I think that the Constitutional Court has to provide certainty around that particular issue. Um, and again, if they had, um, you know, the the luxury of time, they could have waited for the Electoral Court to furnish its reasons, apply their mind, then go to the Constitutional Court. So it doesn't seem as if they're being reactionary. But the reality of it is that the electoral election timetable is set in stone, and you can't. Um, change it willy-nilly. And so that's why they need to have that certainty. The other, I mean, uh, the, 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 the fact that, you know, I mean, th- that's a huge debate. I don't know if legal scholars mm. will, will agree on, on how um, the matter around remission was argued. And, I mean, the Electoral Court must tell us, wh- you know, why they perhaps sided with uh, Advocate Ali Porfu in that particular argument or not. Um, but, but again, um, there needs to be that level of clarity um, mm-hmm. so, that, so that the decision, whichever way it is, uh, is, 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 you know, certain. And, and remember, and we will get an... only been... Yeah, carry on. There's only there's not only been objections to Jacob Zuma. There's been objections to to uh, somewhat half a dozen or more other candidates as well. And so it's, it's if if um, the court upheld the the argument that um, the IEC doesn't have the authority to 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 prevent candidates, for me that goes way beyond Jacob Zuma. Okay. Well, I mean, clearly we we will get clarity, now, and I think that that would be good for for our country, not just for this election, but certainly going forward, right? Having said that, the, the fact that there's been accusations of bias uh, leveled against uh, the, the IEC's Janet Love, not just by Dali and Pofu, uh, but, but certainly I've, I've spoken to the spokesman for MK a few days ago, saying the same thing, that, that you know she must resign, she must get out now, right? Uh, do I take it, therefore, the IEC had no choice at all but to effectively take this to the Constitutional Court because effectively they also have to challenge the accusations against their own commissioner? I mean, I wonder how much of that actually played a, a role, and I don't think it played that significantly in the in their court papers to the uh, uh, in their argument, at least in their legal argument to the constitutional court. But I do think that there's a public sentiment issue, and as they said in their in their uh, responding papers in the electoral court, to say 
the MK party has been, has been preempting this decision long before they knew it was coming. That's why they marched to the IC. That's why Bongo um, Kanile uh, threatened violence against the IC should they have made this decision. That's why uh, Brisbane Reddy um, threatened to shut down and not, uh, mm, not allow mm, uh, mm, elections to, to take place. This, this was long before an objection was even raised against the, uh, the, the yeah. candidacy of, of, of Jacob Zuma. And so, uh, you know, in terms of a strategic decision, I think it's important for the IC to protect its integrity. But I, I, I understand someone like Terry Salani, you know, a bit hesitant um, about them sort of taking the MKP on directly at the constitutional court, because then it becomes um, the IEC, you know, playing into that, that gallery, and it, be- and it creates a, a, a political football um, at a time when the IEC needs to mm-hmm. be seen to be above uh, uh, any uh, uh, reproach. Fair, fair point. You've got, you got 30 seconds to answer this point. We're on to news time now, right? Uh, Leaving aside the technicalities and the legal issues, purely in in so far as election campaigning is concerned, does this even the challenge to the constitutional court give the 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 MK party the runway to rally supporters very emotionally and therefore get massive mileage in the build up to May twenty nine? They were doing it anyway, so this this would just be uh, you know a continuation of that. Jacob Zuma has long uh, uh, accused, without any substantiation, the IEC uh, um, of 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 quote unquote you know perhaps rigging the elections, and so this this just feeds into a long standing campaign of misinformation and disinformation by the MK party against the electoral commission and I think that it needs to be counted at every point. Okay, misinformation, disinformation according to Kanita Hunter. Kanita, I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for that and I'm sure you as the audience have a feel of the national pulse here. What do you make of that? Feel free as always to contribute and you can WhatsApp text me or WhatsApp voice note me uh, and probably give us, give us a call as well. Uh, you can do that right Right away, let's get to the news now. It's five o'clock. Top stories for this hour. Mandasha calls on mining companies to give back to communities. An MK party raises concerns over Zondo participating in the IEC hearing. Good afternoon. I'm Eva Chipa. Mineral Resources and Energy Minister Greta Mandaje has emphasized the importance of mining companies and plowing back to their labor-sending communities. He officially opened a new clinic at the community of Mbendweni in the Eastern Cape. The clinic was built by Saman Kor Western Crow Mine as part of its labor and social plan initiatives in partnership with the Eastern Cape Department of Health. Mandasha explains that the social and labour plans are implemented to enhance the quality of life in mining communities. The social labour plan is intended for mine companies to pay social licence in communities where they mine and in communities where they source labour. So this is what is happening. It's not a gift, it's not a, a favour, it's a social licence because people from these areas go to the mines and produce wealth for others. So this is what we are doing. MK Party spokesperson Shlamulon Jela says Chief Justice Raymond Zondo will be conflicted should he participate in hearing the IEC's appeal against an electoral court judgment regarding MK leader Jacob Zuma. The IEC has filed an urgent appeal to the Constitutional Court challenging the electoral court for overturning its decision to bar Zuma from standing in the May elections. Ndlela says for Zondo, the conflict of interest arises from his refusal to recuse himself as head of the state capture inquiry, which ultimately led to Zuma's refusal to appear before the commission, leading to a 15-month contempt of court sentence for the former president. This is the same constitution that presided and uh, over the matter of uh, sentencing President Zuma in the first place. So Judge Zondo in himself finds himself conflicted. There's no doubt about that. He's conflicted in this matter. Um, and the IEC now, uh, by virtue of them bringing this case, uh, you know, further makes this whole process a constitutional crisis. 
The organization on doing tax abuse says motorists will not be liable to pay their outstanding ETOL debt. The Transport Minister, Cindy Siwe Chikunga, and Gauteng Premier Panyazili Sufi officially deactivated the ETOL network on Gauteng roads at midnight. The ETOLs that the road agency Sunral was overseeing have sparked considerable controversy since the inception in December 2013. Outers Wayne Duvenacher says motorists should ignore the ETOL bills. No, they don't have to pay. There's no outstanding bill. Quite frankly, you know, Sanwell have written off this debt uh, in their financials. They've been unable to collect this debt. There's no enforcement mechanism available to them other than summonsing a motorist, which they were doing for some time, but they abandoned that in March 2019. So when you don't have an enforcement mechanism for debt, uh, which government have been asking the road users to pay for for 10 years, and 80% of them, the vast majority have not paid and uh, will not be paying uh, as far as we're concerned, there is no debt due. Uh, motorists should ignore those bills. The NPA believes it has a strong case against the six suspects arrested in connection with the hijacking and murder of KZ Chiefs defender Luke Fleurs. All six accused are each facing five charges, including murder, robbery with aggravating circumstances. These suspects made a brief appearance at the Rodipert Magistrate Court this morning, where their case was postponed to the 19th of this month. Fleurs was shot and killed during a hijacking incident in Rodipert, west of Johannesburg, last week. The NPA spokesperson, Pindim Jonondwan. For now, the test that the docket needs to pass was that of prospects of a successful prosecution. So with the evidence uh, at our disposal, we are sure that um, it has passed the test of prospects of a successful prosecution. The appetite is there to oppose their release on bail. And lastly, Minister of International Relations and Cooperation, Naledi Pando, says South Africa will offer its support to any country experiencing oppression. She is addressing the Muslim community during a prayer session at the Ladies Section at the Grey Street Juma Masjid in Durban. Pando says South Africa will not rest until Palestine is free. We have a sovereign right to hold our own perspective on foreign policy matters and that that right shouldn't suggest to anyone who has a different perspective on Israel that we are against that country. We have a right to hold a particular position. We will speak out on that right. However, we will not be just a mirror voice of another country. We have our own independent positions, we're a sovereign nation, and we maintain our right to speak. Recapping the top story for this hour, Mineral Resources and Energy Minister Greta Mandashe has emphasised that the importance of mining companies to plough back to their labour-sending communities. I'll be back at the bottom of the hour. For SFM News, I'm Eva Chipa. And coming up in your sports this hour, shocks. Welcome back, Eben Itzabeth and Nedbank Kappa Showdown this weekend. More details at 5.30. SAFM, guiding you through the rush hour traffic. Super heavy coming out of uh, Joburg through Midrand on your way to Pretoria this afternoon. Uh, the crash at Allendale is being cleared, but we're left with the one still at Samrand. So it's a heavy backlog from Grayston Drive on the Mike 1 all the way through to that Samrand exit. It's heavy across all lanes uh, with uh, particularly Friday volume in the mix as well. N1 South queuing up from Ravonia down to the Willie Mandela off round. The problem there is you turn into four ways. Uh, no traffic lights on a couple of junctions on Willie Mandela. And the N1 South of 14th Avenue, uh, big queues from Bayers Nordia. Same sort of problem. Traffic light issues you come off at 14th Avenue. Uh, two breakdowns, just for good measure, leaving Peter Maritzburg towards Durban, one just after Market Road, another by Linfield Park, so uh, two queues to work through there uh, coming out of PMB. Uh, just outside Cape Town of Botrafia, there's uh, roadworks on the main N2 carriageway and closures of the R43. That's a sort of link from uh, uh, from uh, the N2 towards Hamana. So there's a lot of disruption in the Botrafia area, particularly along the N2 corridor. It's jamming both ways and still uh, no traffic lights coming out of um, uh, the N1 highway way in towards Goodwood. Jake Scoville Drive at Milton is day two or three without traffic lights there, so queuing pressure on your way to Four Trekker Road. Rob Byrne, SAFM Traffic. Join Smile Foundation for a movie night under the stars featuring Sing 2 on Saturday 20th of April at Old Ed Sports Grounds. To book, visit smilefoundationsa.org. This is an SABC supported initiative. 
University of Johannesburg and University of the Western Cape have a mammoth task to illustrate what a pitch distinction looks like. This is the Hollywood Bet Super League. Witness the Varsity Derby, UJ Ladies FC versus UWC Ladies FC. The Sunday 14 April at 3 p.m. Live on SABC Sport on DTT Channel 4. Also available on SABC Plus and SABC Sport.com. Hashtag we love it here. Proudly brought to you by SABC Sport. SAFM Sunrise with Stephen Grutis. Is it true that some of your members are also not paying their rates to the council? There are some members that do not pay their rates. I myself are withholding currently my rates because I have declared a legal dispute which I am allowed to do by the Municipalities Financial Act. There are no services for seven years. No refuse has ever been removed in my street, my house my business, they don't fix our uh, lights in our town, they don't cut the grass uh, on the pavements, they don't keep the parks up. There is no services, non-existent. I cannot pay them money that they're going to squander on something else. Willem Kunik, thank you. Chair of the Harry Smith, Interbazwe and Tiami Residents Association. SAFM Sunrise with Stephen Grotes, 6 to 9 a.m. The National Pulse with Ashraf Garda on SAFM. You're listening to the National Pulse. Weekdays, 3 to 6 p.m. to 6 p.m. Tell you what, the National Pulse is not just about, you know, current affairs and politics. It's also how you feel about people dying and and, uh, and what happens when you actually go to, to funerals and, and what's your role and what's the what's the norms and what's the decorum that takes place there or, or, or the absence of. All of that will be discussed because we're chatting to Ringo Madeline Gorzi, who's, uh, you know, he's a musician. Everybody knows him, but he's part of, of this feature we have called... Um, the fireside uh, chat, someone suggested we should call it the ringside chat because of the powwow that's going to take place now. You can connect with us right away. We've, we've already raised the issue uh, and some of you have messaged already just giving comment about... In fact, there's an interesting one. Someone is sentenced to death and the sentence is committed to life. Do we say he's on death row? Okay, maybe some fun there around people dying. I don't know if you can have fun about people dying. Absolutely not. But anyway, let's uh, let's do this. We we let me let me bring in Ringo. Ringo, let's uh, let's get you in now. You know, part of the deal here is of this fireside chat. We don't have a bowler. I mean, if, if we could, then we'd really re- reflect a fireside <laughs> chat. Absolutely. But uh, we're going to chat together, and it's pretty cool, and it's unscripted. Sure. Uh, maybe you'll co-host with us, and you can <laughs> call in one of the callers. But but I've asked you to to you know. To raise three, well, to consider three, four things, and so like, what can we talk about in the thirty minutes or so we can talk, or just up to the six o'clock? So, what do you want to raise? Well, let's talk about. Um, in fact, before that, wait, hold yep. it. We, we, I, you know, I must assume not everybody knows who Ringo is. Oh, yes. oh my goodness, man! <laughs> I think we know who you are. In fact, in fact, Riza Bodia, you may know him from, oh, yeah. who's connected oh, yeah. to UB Forty. He says, "Please tell Ringo." <laughs> he did great collaborations with with, sure, uh, with sure. UB Forty. So certainly, somebody knows. Mm. But I mean, give us a quick bio about yourself. For sure. Uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Ashraf. Uh, and I'm working myself on the national parks. You know, yeah. with yourself. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> yes, on the on the fire side chat yeah. yes man this is Matlinguzi, Ringo Matlinguzi, born in Cape Town uh, yes uh, you know went to school in Cape Town then finished in, in uh, the then uh, uh, Transkei mm-hmm. uh, in uh, St. John's College and uh, then came back again and uh, we uh, wanting to pursue uh, my my life in tertiary as a doctor but I couldn't so you became uh, a musician I uh, just became uh, I, I actually <laughs> I, th- I think I, I think I'm still a doctor because I, I heal people through my music well there you, you are know? <laughs> sure so yeah I'm, I'm the, that that is the ring. How, how did the music it? career start? I mean, so so doctor was the plan, but uh, music. What yeah. happened to the music? Well, uh, the music stopped because when when I entered Charlotte Fame, you know, we won as a group from Cape Town Beto, mm-hmm. and we came to Johannesburg, and that was it. And uh, I never went back. And that changed your life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure it did. <laughs> and I mean, you, you've done a lot in the music space, and I'm, mm. I'm not going to read the bio myself because that's sure. a bit boring. So sure. I have something for you to just punctuate. Maybe three significant highlights in your in your music career. Well, you know the the nineteen ninety eight. Yeah, uh, 
one of my songs uh, was voted as the best song in Africa, uh, Sondela. Mm. Uh, if you remember, there was this um, award called Kora Award. Yeah, I certainly remember that. Remember, remember that? Yeah. yeah. So uh, we, you know, I got that as, as the best uh, male artist and also the Can best. Can you still uh, sing a bit of a tune of that song? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Go ahead. Uh, you know, I, I, I still sing on, on, the, on the original key. <laughs> Sondela Tandwa, Sondela Another core award. Okay, yeah, right, so that was right. great, yeah. fabulous, right? For sure, for sure. And then what else? Mm, yeah, well, and, um, uh, you know, uh, being uh, an artist, you know, it took me, you know, to different places, and, and I found myself in um, uh, um, Russia one time, right. you know, in Moscow, uh, where the... the um, the the ambassador you know when when i got there it was ambassador langa when when i got there you know he said to me please ringo one of your songs starts with the you know with the with the word suka please don't use that word uh, because it is a very bad word in russia so <laughs> what what did it mean in it, russian it, it, well it means uh, you know the, the, the wayward lady uh, you know the lady that 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 is very loose okay you know uh, in 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 the russian in, language in the russian language okay. yeah so now here I am. How do you uh, do that? Be- yeah. You no, know, because I'm, 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 it's, I'm used to do that. You know, every time, I'm like, this one is for all the ladies in the house. Uh, yeah. uh, and then I go, Suk. Uh, that is another well, one. And, and, then, then, and the third and one? When I looked at him, he was like looking down, wanting to you know, go under the table. Like, mm, mm. How do you manage I that? thought, no, I'm not going to say sorry. I'll carry on with this my language anyway. <laughs> but, but it's true, you're speaking your language. Exactly. I mean, you know, so, yeah, yeah, I just carried on. All right. Are you still mm-hmm. chummies? Uh, you and the ambassador. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure. No, after that, no, we laughed about it. Like, oh, yeah, man. Are. Yeah. And the so, third one? Yeah. Well, um, that is, well, you know, uh, music has taken me to, to meet uh, different people in life. You know, uh, I met. Uh, Presidents, I met the beggar on on, on the mm-hmm. street. You know, I met everyone. Yeah, and uh, so it, it it made me to be accessible. Absolutely. To everyone, basically. You know, you know yeah. from yeah. number zero to number one of the country. And we we are richer for that. You know. Absolutely. <laughs> yes. What are you, what are you doing now? Well, uh, now I'm um, I'm working on 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 my album. Uh, you know, because it's been like I've uh, uh, just been. You know, putting you know the uh, hold on it because I've been uh, working uh, for the people, you know, and uh, fighting for the people, and uh, really, you know, uh, uh, being with the people and and be on, be on the ground, and uh, yeah. Uh, and when will that album drop? When can we expect it? Well, well, uh, we're looking at uh, dropping it in. Uh, uh, August. Okay, so yep, a few months. Yep, yep, right, yep. to get us to August, uh, mm-hmm. when, when, when Ringo will be talking about the album and nothing else, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right now he wants to talk about <laughs> life in death, if I can understand that. Right. So yeah, we asked you to, to, to pick up a topic that you want to talk about, right? Yeah. So t- t- what do you want to raise? Well, look, Ashraf, there, 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 there are so many different things happening, you know, in, uh, in, in, in the graveyard, the gravesite, you know, where people... Uh, <laughs> You know, wanting You're to. You're laughing already. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, I mean, it's, this is going to get it's, you it's into very, trouble. It's, no, <laughs> look, it's it's very strange because some people, you know, get to the graveside, you know, to to be uh, to show everyone that I knew this person better than everyone else. And so maybe, maybe let, let me rewind. I mean, yeah, yeah. Somebody dies, and we've all sure. had family. I've had two family members dying in recent weeks. Okay. Yeah. So people die, and, and people need to get buried. Yep. Ordinarily, what is the purpose of, of family members when they go to the graveside when people die? What, what is your opinion? What, what should they be doing there? Well, is to say their last respect, you know, and mm. uh, and 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 of course for the closure where they they, they watch the the coffin going down yeah. and really making sure that yes, it is it had uh, happened for okay. real because uh, sometimes <laughs> you know people don't believe that it, it has happened. You know. Okay. So uh, I mean, just to see it happening, they say, "Okay, yeah." All right. This is my closure. So, so that's what they should be doing. Now, yep. now you saying, 
Many of them who go to gravesides oh, yes, to, don't for, do that. What for, do they do? For different, you know, look, uh, there, there was this, uh, you know, uh, uh, famous, uh, you know, the guy that, that, that made the, the, the tombstone. Um, the guy from Soweto, know, I think it is. Yep, yeah, yeah you know, I what's, think. What's his name? I can't remember. Le, but I, I've been to Le Wuhan, Le, yeah. Le, Le Wuhan uh, Kit. Right. Yeah. May his soul rest in peace. Yeah. You know, um, where all of a sudden, you know, the 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 aunt, you know, started to say things that were not, so, were not supposed to be said, you know, yeah. in that at, memorial. At, at his funeral. funeral. Yeah. Yes, you know, so things like that. And uh, so, th- th- you know, these these are things that, that are like shocking, you know, other people. And uh, look, that that is one of the, the, the you know, the, the dynamics that are happening within, you know, the... The gravesite. So, so, so one is at, at the gravesite, and, yeah. and they say what? And so, what? What are these people saying? Well, well look, Ashraf. Sometimes you know you get you get this guy. You know these, especially you know the the ladies would 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 shout and and, and faint and wanting to throw themselves in the hole. You know, and and uh, some of them they, they they would actually plan it. You know, like you know in a, in a, in a, in a, you know you, <laughs> you you know you'll be like a fly. Like, you, you know, like they would be talking to their friends like. You know, friend, what I'll do is uh, I'll, I'll just... Uh, they're, they're actually practicing to do that. You so know? you've been listening. I mean, you've been uh, oh, watching. Sometimes, sometimes you, you, you hear, like, as you're passing, like, hey, <laughs> someone is planning to go to throw himself in the hole. And then do they throw themselves? Oh, sure. They, they, they go like... And then I mean, sudden, to, what's it, like six feet or something? They have to jump, right? No, no. They make sure that uh, <laughs> someone who is closer to them loves them so much that they will hold them back. Otherwise, if you... Let them go. They'll be worried that oh no, you know. Look, you know when 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 someone is is um is very uh, is a coward. You know, he would want to be held back when it's like yeah, oh, yeah. I'll beat you up. Yeah. Then when you let and him you go, want to be back. <laughs> so, so you you so that's one thing. And you yeah, yeah. We, we got some voice notes and and uh, so you saying what? There's too much of too much can drama. Can I call it theater? Too, you saying drama? Yeah, can I call it theater? You know, and 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 sometimes it's it's uh it's a bit. Uh, Embarrassing. At the same time, it's it's um <laughs> it's humorous, you know. Where, <laughs> where you know a guy will get there, you know, like he would he would be asking God that God, please, why did you take this one? This one is bringing money at home. <laughs> you left so and so. Now he is, you know, you should have taken him rather than taking my brother, you know. And they would be creating a lot of you know, noise and shouting and asking. I, I know a family why? member when he, when he passed away, the other other members said, why did you leave me? You know, that, that's what they like, why did you leave me? Why did you leave me? Why did you leave me with this, you, you know, stupid one? <laughs> why did you, you leave know, me? You know, things like those. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and, and, and some guys, you know, would be shouting at the, at the, at the dead cop, you know, cops that... Hey, you know, okay. you know so it's a big, what are you doing? But you say uh, is the primary reason out of absolute uh, compassion, or is yeah. it out? Of, is it theater? I, I think it is theater because look, uh, if if I have you know all these questions in me, and uh, I wish to 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 talk to somebody about it, let me choose one of my you know closest you know relatives and like <laughs> pour myself out that. You know, God is very, you know, is selfish. Oh. Why this? Why that? And everything. So now, not in front of other people, you know. <laughs> okay. I tell you what, let, let's get further thoughts on this. So, what do you make about, so what do you make of funerals um, in South Africa where people attend and they mourn, but but there's there's theater, as, as uh, Ringo has suggested, there's theater there where people threaten to throw them in, they, uh, they throw themselves in, they make a, they make, they, 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 they wail, they chant, but but at a level way above everybody else. Um, and, and there's huge emotions around it and they say things that are sometimes quite embarrassing. Mm. They shouldn't even be saying things like that and they go out and blurt out different things. Um, what do you make of it? And I mean, how much of it is religious? How much of it is cultural? Um, are you one of those people? Just tell me. Uh, or have you observed someone like that very recently? And what do you what do you make of it? Now you can call in and tell me. Oh wait, six triple zero two zero three two. You can also WhatsApp, and that's uh, text or voice notes. Oh six one four one zero four one zero seven. In fact, we've got a couple of voice notes. Let's play them. Uh, good day, Sam. Uh, here's this thing called Hui about the funerals. 
uh, when somebody has passed away, you go there, you see their body dressed in suits and, and, and whatnot, you make peace with it. So now, this thing of throwing yourself in the hole, I think it's, uh, in most cases, it's those, I believe so, it's those people who do not do this thing of Othoboka, people who, whom they love, and now when they face reality, it, it, it hits them hard. And this one's who faints. Those, that Rahadi, most of them, most of those Rahadis, they are prophets. If you check most of them, they are spiritually gifted and it somehow affects them. I don't know the reason behind it, but when you follow it, it's those people. So, yeah, we do not show how they, they parted, and then when they part physically, it hits us very hard. Stumza, uh, just. Okay, Rahadi, help me. What, what is, and he's talking about prophets? Well, uh, Stones are talking about, uh, you know, most of those people that that that, that would be, uh, you know, saying things in 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 that situation. There would be people who who are prophesizing about whatever mm-hmm. is going to happen, or uh, people who want to speak the truth, you know, that the other people don't know. But about. he's suggesting you need to take them seriously, and that's what that caller is suggesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know for that. All right. Yeah. I want to check. I think there's, a, there's another voice note. If we can play that one. Yeah, it is. Hi, Ashraf. I think those people that have become so dramatic around uh, the gravesite uh, when there is a burial are actually the artists. Um, artists, they spend a lot of time practicing and honing their um, uh, abilities to faint in the most uh, convincing way. Um like uh, you, you think that uh, it's a life-threatening situation, but it's it's actually an act uh, in most cases because they pick a spot which seems um, just a bit safer, so that uh, if, uh, if 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 the person falls, there are no injuries, or else there should be uh, somebody around to to pick them up or to hold them, um, should they decide uh, to 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 fall. So it's mostly an act. Mo- Oh my God! Mostly an act, and he's saying they they hmm. sort of hone their skills, learning how to faint. I've never heard of this, but I know there's been issues in Ghana. You can hire people to mourn, right? Okay, let's talk more about it. We're gonna we continue chatting as part of our fireside chat with Ringo uh, Madlingozi, but he wants to talk less about music, but certainly more about the fact that uh, people perform at gravesides. You tell me more if you have stories to share your. Can I call it that your favorite graveside story <laughs> right after this? The Saturday play. Hey, Lucifer. It's Mercado. What? Did he say anything? Oh, did he confess? No, he's dead. Mm, that went easier than I thought it would. We can finally have everything we've wanted. Catch me, Errol Ndoto, on the Saturday play. A better house, a better car, your dance studio. This is it, baby. Uh-huh. How, baby? Catch the Saturday play between 9 and 10 p.m. Only on SAFM. X at SAFM Radio and at Ashraf Garda. Well, I mean, here's another... Um Regarding that issue, what about those who start shooting at the graveside because mm. a guy was a hustler or a gang member? That's not theater. That's for real, man. Well, you know, <laughs> still, it's, it's, it's showing off. You see, uh, I mean, what's the point of getting there instead of shooting in the, where there are people who are uh, seriously, you know, grieving over their, their, their loved ones? I mean, to go there and start shooting others, even they, they start to open bottles of liquor and, and pour, and pour on, on, the, on the casket uh, to show that, yes, we used to drink with this guy. So, so that's like showing love and affinity. You, you know, it's I'm more like, uh, they, they, they're sort of like ritual, you know. Yeah, go but well, what, my friend. When that happens, that. What, what, I mean, I would... So you must correct me if I'm wrong. Sure. We, we, in this country, the majority of funerals will be Christian funerals. Right. Yep. Yep. So, so we are talking about Christian That's cultural correct. funerals, right? Sure. So, what would the what, what would the religious leaders say about things? Like they that? they are stunned. Others are uh, you know they 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 are, they, they are scared, or to 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 confront these people. Some of them, you know, like if if say it's somebody who who was um, 
in jail. Yeah. So <laughs> maybe he died in jail, and then you know all these uh, chummies you know, come. Uh, yeah. yeah, with 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 all these num gangsters numbers. So they have their own like ritual that they do. They would stand, you know, they would stand around, you know, this this casket and start doing these funny things, like uh, you know, as if it's a recitation. Yeah, they said show, you know, uh, bending down and showing seven and all those things. It's like, and then. The family would be stunned looking at them. They would, they didn't know what to, they wouldn't know what to do because and, and they're too scared. I would yeah, think. yeah, sure. And and the reverend would be like, he, you know, he's want, he wanting to finish this and then go home quick. Yeah, oh. so things like that happen. And and I mean the the, the earlier part you mentioned about uh, uh, women. You said mainly women who yeah. who mm. literally put on a massive massive show. And I mean I mean mm. does that show like. I'm assuming that how much they love. Would that be a male who's passed away or a female, like a husband, or what? It could be uh, maybe someone who, who whom is is known, now, you know, in in within the society. So they want to be associated with that person. Yeah. Or if it is a man, you no, know, uh, she would want to be known again as the the. The, the closest to I, that, I to that. You, or, Lord, or yeah. maybe you know, a girlfriend, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. yes, that she wants to expose herself that, yes, this was my man, <laughs> you know, but with, I mean, within the family, you know, unit. And, and sometimes it's very, uh, yeah, it's Well, I mean, that, that one call that we had where the, where the guy said, like, people rehearse these types of things. Oh, they sure. Oh, no, yeah. No, man, I can't believe it, man. <laughs> I'm <laughs> no. clearly very naive and very <laughs> dumb when it comes to this. No, they do. So, sorry, but let, let's get another. I think there's a few more WhatsApps. Let's see. Uh, the Pulse team, um, it's not just in um, South Africa. This thing of um, those theatric, like Ringo is saying, my brother, my lingos. It's all over the world. You can go through all the African countries, right through to the, our European, uh, European brothers. The same thing is happening. Okay, same thing is mm -hmm. happening in, in European countries too. Well, you know, I, I don't know what could be the cause of that. You know, it's more about trying to, to get attention. You know, uh, if one is, 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 is missing, you know, something uh, within he, his or her life, mm. then he or she will choose that environment to get people to look at him or her. Well, well they, they then <clears throat> sent over attention. Exactly. You see, uh, some, some ladies, you know, would... would uh, mm. Dressed to the nines, you know, uh, have all the stilettos and all that, m knowing that they are, they'll be going to a place where they'll be mud uh, or, or, you know, like a sand mm, th mm. that will sunk the heels in. So inappropriate, but they would, they would still wear that. You know, and, uh, and then they, 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 they'll be having the, the, you know, the, their heels stuck, you know. And, and then they will be having, you know, all, all that. It's funny when you look at it, but then you, know, you understand that, uh, you know, she has planned all that. You know, she cannot change that, that shoe because that shoe was, is right with the outfit that she has chosen. Of course. You know? I'll tell you what, let, let's do this. We, we're getting on to news time. Let me do this. Have you been, as, as a member of the audience, uh, nationally, wherever you are, have you been involved in a situation where you've had to be dramatic at a funeral that you attended and you wanted to be dramatic, willfully so? Or do you know somebody else who has been? And if that's the case, and I want to hear from you, you can call in because I want to take your, I really want to Q&A you. So you need to call in right away and I want to hear what exactly you have to say. You also have uh, to call in, it's uh, 86 2032 otherwise WhatsApp 0614-104-107, text or voice note. Let's get the news headlines now, 5.30. In your news headlines for this hour, ANC First Deputy Secretary General Nomvulam Gonyane has denied accountability in the alleged maladministration and corruption relating to the multi million rand Giani bulk water project. She was the Minister of Water and Sanitation between 2014 and 2018 while the multi billion rand project was underway. In other news, DA leader John Steenhazen has vowed to create jobs, end load shedding and fix law enforcement in the country. Steenhazen said this during the DA's provincial manifesto launch in Tabanchu in the Free State. And lastly, Mineral Resources and Energy Minister Greta Mantaje has emphasized the importance of mining companies in plowing back to their labor sending communities. I'll be back at 6 with more news. For SFM News, I'm Eva Chipa. SAFM. 
guiding you through the rush hour traffic. Still jam-packed on the M1, heading north this afternoon through Midrand, a crash between uh, Oliphant's Fontaine and Samran. Two lanes are blocked, plus the Friday volume is a heavy queue right back to Marlborough Drive on the Mike 1 North. There's also been a collision on the N1 south at the Willie Mandela off ramp, so that traffic just south of the Clue interchange on the run down the four ways uh, gets very heavy. And this cash and transit heist that we've been uh, warning you about, it's on the 554 Van Dijk Road uh, between Osborne Road and Heidelberg Road, so there's uh, a full closure of that road and some very heavy traffic having to sort of loop around uh, some alternative routes. The breakdown coming out of Peter Marsberg at Market Road through to Ashburton. That is being cleared. Uh, Cape Town today, a bit of traffic on the M1 out towards the Okavango Road exit, the M5 North. Still pretty slow for a Friday afternoon. Uh, to the Cooperg interchange. And if you're driving in or out of Cape Town, a little bit further afield, there are some roadworks on the N2 at Bot Rafir, just east of Bot Rafir. That's causing quite a heavy backlog both ways. Rob Byrne, SAFM Traffic. <laughs> This is SAFM Sports with Duming Khabele. So, just do you think these these graveside chats are a are a sport? That's why I'm asking. Like, is that a champion of of, 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 of graveside graveside dramas? Oh wow! <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> okay, move on. Alrighty, let's uh, get straight into what's happening in your world of sports. Marathon coach Mike Mbambani, uh, Mbambani rather, has been named as the head coach of the South African marathon team for this year's Olympic Games that is set to be staged in Paris between July and August. Coach uh, Mike uh, brings a wealth of experience to the South African team where he will uh, craft strategies for six road runners who will uh, look to uh, fly the South African flag high at the Games in France. So far, only four road runners have qualified for the Olympics namely Gerda Steyn, Sian Oldno, Yvette van Zeyl and Steven Mokoka. Now the athletes who will fill the two spots left for male long-distance runners will be confirmed by the end of May. In the meantime, Kenya's Eloj Kipchoge says that he expects to make history with his third consecutive Olympic marathon gold medal at this year's Games. Kipchoge is one of three athletes who have won two Olympic gold medalists in the marathon when they retained their titles. When asked about when he He's retiring. He has reiterated his commitment to trying to inspire people of all levels to keep on the move. In rugby, the Sharks have been boosted by the return of Lock Eben Etzebeth, who's back from injury for their clash against Eden Bryant Durban tomorrow in the quarterfinals of the Challenge Cup. It's uh, the only change to the Sharks team that thrashed Zebra 47 3 at Kings Park last weekend. Etzebeth replaces Corne Roll, who uh, moves to the bench in place of uh, Herbrand Hrobla. And the other change is on the bench where replacement hooker Dan Euster comes in for Karan van Furen. In football, our attacks will have to find ways to get past uh, Mamelodi Sundowns tonight without two of their key players due to the loan agreement policy between the two teams. The Brazilians have allowed strikers Tabang Sibanyone and Promise Mkuma to uh, spend the 2023-24 season at uh, their rivals in the Mazipe Foundation Championship. But the duo are unable to face their parents club and coach Klesani Mutaung has admitted that Sibanyoni in particular will be greatly missed in the Nedbank Cup quarterfinal cl- uh, clash at the Lucas Muripe Stadium this evening. Meanwhile, Super Sport United head coach Gavin Hunt has admitted that they failed in recent games to uh, climb up the league table, but he believes that Mazazanza can still achieve a CAF Champions League spot and win a trophy this season. The 20 side are currently in sixth place in uh, the log with uh, eight matches to go and they away to Stellenbosch FC in the Nepal Cup quarterfinals at the Danny Craven Stadium tomorrow afternoon and Hunt has dismissed any suggestions that the campaign is all but over. I think if you, if you look at the league, I think between sort of second and sixth or seventh, we've got our own little league going there, you know, um, and we certainly were top of that league five games ago. So we've, we've, we've got behind the eight ball a little bit there, but I still we've got time to catch up there, I think. I do think if you look at the fixtures that's coming up. Anything's off with motorsport, the Australian Grand Prix will return to its traditional position as the first race of the new season in 2025. Melbourne, which uh, will host the race weekend from the 14th to the 16th of March, had held the first race virtually every year since uh, it made its debut in 1996, but it has not done so since 2019 after the COVID-19 pandemic led by Bahrain taking over. Now, Melbourne will be followed by races in China and Japan before the two events in the Middle East. On that note, 
It's a wrap from my side. However, you can catch me later on uh, our sports show from uh, 7 till 8 p.m. Other than that, kinatumen kapel mudi mugyo. All right. Join Smile Foundation for a movie night under the stars featuring Sing 2 on Saturday, 20th of April at Old Ed Sports Grounds. To book, visit smilefoundationsa.org. This is an SABC supported initiative. Mummy Lodi Sundowns ladies believe they belong at the top and they want the vital three points. But Linda Lani ladies are on a mission to shock Banyana Bas style. This is the Hollywood Bet Super League. Witness the queens of the beautiful game. Mummy Lodi Sundowns ladies FC versus Linda Lani ladies FC. The Sunday 14 April at 11 a.m. Live on SABC Sports on DTT Channel 4. Also available on SABC Plus and SABC Sport.com. Hashtag we love it here. Proudly brought to you by SABC Sport. For the love of the game. Economic news on SAFM. Facts and figures you can count on. Tell you what, we could talk about the business of um, the business of dying, right? Uh, as per Gravesides with my with my guest Ringo and and. Uh, as part of the fireside chat, and feel free to connect with me even further about just your experiences. Do you know someone who's been hired, like specifically hired, to be able to attend funerals and and be center stage, um, and then has done it at more than one funeral? So it's not somebody who's a family member. If you know anybody like that, I want to know. Oh eight six triple zero two zero three two. Otherwise, WhatsApp, text, or voice notes. Oh six one four one zero four one zero seven. Let's, however, talk about the other business, the markets, with uh, Jimmy Moyaha. Jimmy, first of all, thanks for the Eid Mubarak uh, greeting. Most appreciated, by the way. <laughs> good afternoon, Ashraf. Good afternoon. good afternoon to Jimmy, and good afternoon to Ringo and the listeners. Thank you. Right, go ahead. You have lots to talk about, I'm sure. Yes, the markets have had quite the day. Um, we'll start with Asian markets overnight because they seem to be the least eventful. Uh, Hong Kong markets were down 2%. Uh, Shanghai markets down about half a percent. Sydney down about a third of a percent. But Tokyo was up about a fifth of a percent. European markets sort of had a mixed day with the FTSE up almost a full percent. But the uh, CAC 40 in France was down half a percent and the DAX in Germany was down half a percent. U.S. markets expected to start off uh, the day rather well, but that seemed to uh, fade out quite quickly. NASDAQ is down 1% at the moment. The S&P is down ha- uh, almost 1% as well. And the Dow is down about 0.85%. U.S. has started their earnings reporting cycle again, and we kick off with banks typically. And we got uh, J.P. Morgan uh, reporting lower than expected uh, interest income forecasts along with Wells Fargo. So the banks missing estimates and disappointing in this round of earnings season. And I suppose that's what's giving the U.S. markets such uh, negative uh, sentiment at the moment. That sentiment isn't filtering through to the dollar just yet because the dollar against the rand is 18 rand 90 cents, uh, down about 0.8 percent there. Uh, The pound at 23 rand 52 uh, and at the euro 20 rand and 11 cents there. If we look at an Australian dollar, that'll cost you two, 12 rand and 23 cents. The gold price made new record highs today. It's sitting at about $2,400 an ounce now, but it came off $2,420 an ounce there, uh, setting new highs for, or new all time highs for the gold price. Uh, platinum prices back above $1,000 started the day below $1,000 at around $980 an ounce. Uh, so it's up about three and a half. Uh, palladium prices heading for $1,100. They're up about just under 4% as well. And if we look at the local boss, the all share was pretty much flat on the day's trade. Uh, The top 40 was up 0.1%. Financials were down almost 3%. Uh, Industrials were down 1.46%. But everything seems to have been rescued by resources. Resources doing a massive 6% on the day's gains. Uh, And if we look at some of those counters that led the charge there, the likes of Harmony, Impala, uh, African Rainbow, Minerals, Anglo Plat, Sabanya Stillwaters, DRD Gold, all the platinum counters having really, really good days. All of those stocks that I've mentioned had at least 7% gains on the day. If we look at some of the big losers on the day, uh, the likes of Telcom losing about 6.7%, Investec losing about 5%, uh, the Foschini Group losing about 3.8%, Sunlum losing about 4%. So not a good day for the financials. Um, industrials, the, the likes of Vodacom, they were down about 3.6%, but a really, really solid uh, performance from our mining stocks off the back of the, those stronger commodities prices. We'll keep an eye on these commodities prices going into next week and see if the momentum will be sustained and if we get a different 
important uh, conversation from the U.S. Fed now that we know that we could potentially see interest rates higher for longer and we've seen the South African picture could look that we might not even have interest rate cuts throughout this year. We hope that isn't the case, but we'll keep an eye on these and other stories in the business realm and we'll join the listeners again next week. Right, there we are. We continue chatting. Thanks for that, Jimmy. So we continue talking about um, about funerals with the... With, with Ringo. Uh, so you were talking about clothing. Yeah. Right? So we're talking about the drama. Mm-hmm. Just to recap, we're talking about the drama. We're talking about the people who go overboard and go crazy. Have you ever stopped them? You. No, no, no <laughs> but I, look, <laughs> Ashram, you know, you, you, would, you would believe that everyone who's going there, you know, is, has lost somebody or, you know, lo- lost someone that, that, that they loved dear. Yeah, so, yeah. You would just assume everyone who is there, you know, is very uh, uh, heartbroken. Yeah. But then, you know, you find other people that that they 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 have, uh, you know, uh, they bought, you know, the 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 clothes to wear, like, you know, like white, you know, yeah, they, yeah. They, they they they'd be looking. Would so they wear white or would they wear black? Morning. Normally, it would be like black. Yeah. But yeah. but these days, you know, people just, you know, they 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 decide what they want to wear. You know, some of them would would wear very uh, you know bright colors, and then it rains, okay. and then and then the mud and then the mud comes in, <laughs> and then everything is. Are you taking photos? <laughs> no, you got to be like you know you 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 just like think oh no uh, you know the 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 outfit has been uh, you know ruined now, you know uh, because. People want, you know, they wear those clothes to be a sin, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, it's like someone driving in a, in a very beautiful car. Uh, only the people from the outside are, 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 are you know, uh, very much, you know, looking at the car and say, wow. Yeah. This is yeah. But then you inside the car, you know, you're just driving a car. So it's cool, you know. And uh, so people just want to be seen. You know, no, they want to be appreciated. So yeah, the, those those things happen, man. And and some, you know, what's the, what's Ashraf, the craziest story? I mean, you you've seen Ashraf. Ashraf, you know, you you get people coming in. If maybe the guy was uh, an artist, yeah, you know, music, they, they, music, yeah, 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 yes, they 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 would come blasting the the deceased music very loud. And come and get closer to where the people are. You know, uh, that it doesn't... Uh, first of all, it is only proper not to play loud music uh, yeah. when the, you know, people are mourning and, and praying and singing, you know, all those, uh, you know, solemn songs yeah, yeah. and what. But then you come in and blast, you know, your music up and playing the very same uh, music that the guy is, you know, is known for. But you see, here's the thing... Um, I mean, how much of it is is so? I'm making the point that sure. the pre- predominantly we're talking about Christian funerals in South Africa. That's right. right. I mean, it could vary according to you know mm-hmm. Jewish or Muslim tradition or, mm-hmm. or 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 Hindu. The Muslim tradition is there's nothing of that sort. Okay, sure. generally I would think. But if it's Christian tradition, I mean, uh, so how much of it is Christian and how much of it is cultural? Look, I don't think there's culture in that. You know where people throw themselves in 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 the hole, or uh, you know mm. uh, talking to the deceased, or talking to God, and it's all drama, you know, or coming in and 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 shooting the air uh, just to create that, or uh, you know just. So it's not religious. Around. It's not cultural. It's just no, straight it, drama. It's just drama. It's just people wanting to 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 draw attention to themselves. And then when people go home, what do they all talk about? Like, so, I mean, so do you then have those chats. Like, so they were talking about that. You know, actually, that's what they want. They want people to be talking about them <laughs> when they're going home. You know, and uh, uh, look, some this thing is, um, you know, it it, it 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 also boils down to the fact that as uh, family members of the the past, uh, you know, one would want to to take the the dead body, you know, to the graveside with a very expensive car, you know, a Bentley, so they, to speak. They can't afford or they can't afford? The, well, all, if, remember, at that time, it doesn't matter if the person that is being buried is was poor or, or rich. 
But the people who want to be seen now are those that are taking over mm. the, the funeral. So they would hire a Bentley. You know, they would hire all these beautiful Just to cars. put that, wait, wait, is that, is that for, the, for, the, for the body to be put in or is that for themselves to drive in? No, it's, it's, it's for, for them, the whole thing, you know, for, like the, for, entourage, for, yeah. for yeah. The, of yeah. the entourage and, and, and wanting to, to be seen that they took over the, the burial and, and, and the funeral of so-and-so. I mean, I mean wh- wh- why wouldn't those people, you know, uh, come on, just, just driven that person you know, while he or she was alive in, in such, you know, uh, luxurious they cars. They don't have those cars anymore. So how widespread is that? Well, you get that uh, from people <laughs> who who who, are, uh, who know, you know, the 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 dead. Uh, maybe they, they are distant cousins or friends, and then they'll come and say, "No, I'm going to give him, you know, the the best send off." For who? Is there is there a TV or radio show like uh, the best uh, funerals, uh, the, the you know the most memorable funerals around? For me, oh. that for me that 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 is that is crazy. Uh, <laughs> no, no, no. Okay. I, I, I don't want to be driven in a Bentley. You don't want to even get there. <laughs> right? Let's no. see if we've got some more WhatsApps there because people are commenting about um, funerals, uh, in this case, in South Africa. Although, I mean, you, you know, I mentioned it earlier, in, like in, in Ghana. Did you see those guys? I mean, those, those things always do the rounds where they, they hire people and they come in and they do this, this whole piece. It's like a show. I mean, have you ever been hired? They haven't hired you, Ringo. <sighs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I, they I would come choose. there and there's this group of about ten people and they're carrying the coffin and they they dance to a beat, right? And this is in Ghana. But let's see, there's some more voice notes. Hi, um, yeah, it it happens. Um, mostly it helps when coming to that part of um, when we supposed to go back to the home of the funeral and eat and so that thing it helps you to they remember you and then you don't need to be on the queue and stuff you are you just you are let through and to where they eat uh, better food and <laughs> all those uh, seven colors thing Chop. Okay, that's, a, that's another. And there's another one saying, I'm from PE regarding funerals. I was shocked the other day to see there's a vacancy. Listen to this one. I was shocked to see, <laughs> Ringo, there's a vacancy for people to just cry at funerals. And you know what? They must be serious. So there you are. There's another one. Uh, let's see if there's, a, there's another voice note to play. Hi, Atraf. Good day. Luantle here from PE. Kabeha speaking. Um, I, I I think this is a proof of the fact that cultures are not stagnant. They move with time. Right? Uh, but some of the cultures that develop over time, you just might not like them. And I, some of them I don't like, especially the shooting and funerals and all of that. But we must not be conservative in, in our assessment. Uh, it, it would be funny to me in a culture that reduces most black people, the majority of the country, it closes space economically for them so much that they are reduced to, to crime, whether it's in the sense of taverns which don't have licenses or it's people who have guns without licenses who, 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 who subsist that way through crime, right? Uh, for me, uh, I don't get Bringo's concern. It's a bit being conservative. Even the idea of dress. People don't have much, you know, so they have those stilettos. They're going to wear those stilettos come rain or shine, right? So it's poverty. It's crime. It's black life. Okay, there we are. Ringo? <laughs> well, oh, come on, man. Ringo you hasn't know, stopped laughing, no, eh? no, and he's talking no, about funerals. No, here. no, no. Look, you know, um, we, 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 we are... Logical people, you see, when when the when 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 the the weather doesn't allow one to 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 wear stiletto, mm. it's not about uh, <laughs> black, uh, you know, the poor state of uh, you know environment or, or mind. No, no, no. I, I think it is about people just to realize that look, the weather is like this now. Mm. Let mm. me wear this, and it's, it's not about what I'm wearing. It's about uh, being there and paying respect to the person that is. But the fact that they're not doing it, I mean, that shows you that there's a subculture that's developed, right? That it's no more. It's not a one-off, right? It's, it's like happening frequently. Well, well, well I think it's it's all about uh, 
the culture of 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 wanting to be seen just like you know the other you know guy on on that on on that uh, voice note who said that people do that so that they are known when when people go back to the house of the deceased they, then they can be spotted and they they'll be ushered direct to the place where they will sit down and and have you know good food or with the the mm. reverend you know that that will be so they they there's that culture that uh, the reverends and the people who are known within that uh, uh, family structure would sit and and and, and have you know uh not not the better food but a, a, a well organized special place, special uh, treatment, special treatment I wonder, yes i wonder you know, if, there's a, if there's a push back against the drama that that ringo talks about i mean you know he's like saying this they 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 dress to the nines they perform they want to jump into the to the graves to show their love they some of them f- uh, feign fainting some of them practice to faint in advance, like all dress rehearsal. They they threaten they're going to do so. They've got a clear plan, um, and and then as you heard, you know, there's people who shoot at, at funerals, all just part of the of the drama that takes place. And then I made the point about uh, those in Ghana, where they have these uh, pole bearers who, um, I mean, they they're hired hands. They're dancing pole bearers. It's, mm. it's visual. Maybe we'll we'll post it on on the on the SFM Radio website um, to a. Twitter on X uh, on the X platform, but uh, the, I mean it's great sound and you can listen to this too. Yeah. Uh, the to it, so. Well, I mean, there you are. It, it says this group turns Paul Bearing into a performance. A complete. Yeah. So they're yeah. saying, like, you're a performer. You've never you know, been hired. You know, <laughs> no, never do that. And, you if, know, and if they ask you, you said no. You'll no, say no. no. Oh, a, a very big no. <laughs> Ashraf, you know, for me, you know, to, to do all these things of uh, carrying the, the, the coffin and dancing and, to, and, and uh, doing this clownish behavior, yeah, yeah. for me, I, I don't go with it. You know, and 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 I don't think it, that is what we should be doing. But you know, on 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 a, on a you know a lighter note, you get people who, who will uh, you know will use the the gravesite as as the um, a site for Italian search. You know, they would come and sing. <laughs> you know, you mean the auditioning? Oh yeah, the, the, and the, then people like you will say, the, "What a oh, voice! What a I voice. need to get this person." You know, yeah, <laughs> and they sing. Have you done that? Well, I've, 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 you know, I have, I have approached them and say, "Oh, this is beautiful," you know, and uh, well, there you are, you, you, you know, you are. but but then you know it, and 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 it's, I think it is uh, proactive into doing that. You can do that, but you know, and and um, Ashraf, you know, another thing is like, uh, you you get people who who are just doing that because now they they found a space where they can you know showcase their talent. The talents, well, it's okay, it. yeah. you know. Um, Let's get a, let's get another. Call. I want to know. I mean, just is there any pushback from anywhere around that, right? Ali Ali from Mafi King. Hi Ali. Yes, I see my fire Ringo. Yeah, you tell us about Ali. Go ahead, I look here. Uh, with the issue of Ringo, I think it's a, it's a, it's another story. The question of culture, like in our village, you'll have this boy from initiation school taking over the funeral uh, rituals, wanting to do. Yeah, because the guys with them from the ritual school. So basically, Africa has lost its, con- its direction. We are lost, we are deep in the bush. Don't call it Christian. Africans are, are, are ancestral worshippers. They are not Christ worshippers. They worship their dead parents. Okay. They are ancestral, they are ancestral worshippers. We have, look, even when we got the 2010 World Cup trophy, it was dedicated to the ancestral spirits. Go to Freedom Park. You will see people singing and praising their ancestors, the evil spirits called ancestral spirits. So what do you, what do you make the, So what do you make of the performances of the graveside then, Ali? The, the, the performance of the graveside, Ringo, you remember during those times of, of the struggle when you used to dance with carrying coffins? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, running around with the coffins of the dead people because showing solidarity and all that kind of nonsensical stuff. Africa is a dark 
It's supposed to be the leader or in the light. Mm. Mm. Let's, let's, Ali, uh, Ringo wants to tell you something. Ringo, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, uh, Ali, 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 exactly what I was saying that there are things that, that uh, you know, a, a clown behavior that, you know, that we shouldn't be, uh, be proud of where, you know, you, you dance around, you know, with the, with the, with the, with the coffin and, and spin around you. Okay. That shouldn't okay. be happening because we, we, yes, of course, uh, as, as, as we are carrying, you know, the, 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 the coffin of, say, remember, you know, when, 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 uh, when the, the grave, the great uh, Steve Bigo was, was, was being um, buried, uh-huh. his coffin was on the shoulders of, of, of his comrades and they were singing. Uh-huh. You know, uh-huh. and 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 that is different from from dancing and you know and and uh, clowning around. Uh, no, it, yeah, it, I'm sorry, Ringo. You know, you know what all this clownish thing? Mm-hmm. Africa is a clownish continent. Mm, 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 that is, and you're saying it with a laugh. Okay, continent. Ali. Thanks for that. <laughs> clownish confident. Uh, con- <laughs> continent. Uh, let's get another quick call before we wrap up. Uh, Dumile, hi, Dumile. Hey, Kuku, good afternoon, Afsa, for a long time. Yeah, I know. Okay, go ahead. Yes. I wanted to correct something about this thing of ancestral worshipping. Right. You know, what's funny about uh, people who, who, who do Christian work? You know, the Jesus Christ they have in charge is an uncle of, of Mr. Darwin. It, it is artistic drawing. But they believe that. Mm. And then when you talk about the spirit, you know, in Africa, we understand patterns and rhythm and frequencies, and we know that every object has to go in space via a certain frequency and rhythm. Mm. When you accompany the soul that has left the physical body and going to another dimension, there's going to be certain things to accompany that soul. There's a quite a, uh, something written about it in the Egyptian Book of the Dead. That book tells you how you accompany the soul through its gate to reach, you know? But if people don't engage with these things and just believe what they read in the Bible, it's, it's, it's a bad okay. thing. All right. Dumila, got that? Yeah, we're going we're gonna to wrap know, up. Thanks yeah. for that. That's a serious issue. Yeah, go ahead. You got yeah, yeah, you know, you know Dumila is right. You know, but it's more like doing it with, with, with the, the, the best respect that one can. Not to jump around here and do all these clownish things. But no, with just a drum. Because a drum uh, is sort of like more a, a, mm. a message that is talking to your ancestors, saying that, okay, we are welcoming you here, wherever you go. Uh, yeah. Here's, we're going to wrap up. Here's, here's the thing. Uh, what happens if you know there's a dip, if if your religious culture, so let's say Christian culture sure. says as a Christian you you behave in a certain way, but then in terms of popular culture, so let's say you're a musician, mm. and and it's you've signed up for the fact that when you die, your grouping will allow for a certain way to perform because it's your culture. In the same way, when a politician dies, they they have a 16 gun saloon or 10 mm. gun saloon mm. uh, because that's their salute rather than that's their culture so if you agree well, with that well, well people will decide if they want uh, on my memorial uh, uh, you, you know uh, service the, they, yeah. They, yeah, they, they will they will celebrate how I was you know but not not at the graveside. Not at the graveside. Yeah. Final, and final words. <laughs> well, you know, the the some some of the preachers will go and and want to recruit people who who are you know crying <laughs> in those graveyards. Hey, nobody has recruited me as yet. They're clearly not doing a good job. <laughs> right. Listen, it's been great talking to you Thank about you bringing the dead to life and the life. And, well, I don't know. Very complicated about yeah, the performances right. around the, the graveside. And you can connect even now as we wrap up the show. I know that uh, John Kadika is in the house, but let me just tell you as well. Uh, a big thanks to my production team, of course, Temat Lamini and. Uh, and, and uh, Lebo and Vusani and, uh, and Finias is looking at me, so I make sure I mustn't forget him as well. But it's gone uh, six o'clock. Uh, let's get the news first.